Amen, you can't believe it. You can't believe that, man. Yo, yo. Now read the like ten minutes now, man. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 9. Why is earth and ashes proud? There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. That's what you just saw. So when the Bible says there is no more wicked thing than a covetous man, that's what you just saw there. For such an one certain his own soul to say, because while he liveth, he casted away his power. Mm. Oh, praise to the Moza. Let's give the Lord a hand, man. <laughs> oh, praise to the Lord. Oh, praise to the Lord. Oh, praise to the Oh, praise to the Lord. Happy Sabbath to you all, brothers and sisters online. Shalom, shalom. So, so today's topic uh, is called Diet, Health, and Weight. Diet, Health, and Weight. That's today's topic. You thought that I'm gonna, gonna, I'm gonna go into it, diet, health, and weight. That's what we're gonna do. That's what we're gonna go into this day. Okay. So all praises to the Lord for that. The Most High moving our spirits to do this because we are unhealthy in Israel. There is no doubt about it. We are unhealthy. We are, we are overweight. Some of us are. Some of some people are underweight. <laughs> you understand? So we must have a perfect and just weight. That's what the Lord requires of us. Okay, so but before we go there, give me the book of Jude. Give me Jude verse 17. Jude verse 17. Let's start there. The book of Jude verse 17. But beloved. But beloved. So the apostle Jude, who is he talking to? Give me that in Baruch 336. But beloved. Okay. Who's the beloved? The apostle Jude is make is is writing to the beloved. Who's that? Watch this. Baruch 3, verse 36, in the Apocrypha. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 36. Come on. He has found out all the way of knowledge. He has found out all the way of knowledge. Come on. And has given it unto Jacob. And he has given it unto who? Unto Jacob. Unto Jacob. Give me that in Genesis 32, 27. He has found out all the way of knowledge, and he has given it unto Jacob. Okay. Genesis 32, 27. Read what you got. The book of Genesis, chapter 32, verse 27. Read. And he said unto him, mm -hmm. What is thy name? Go ahead. And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob. Thy name shall be called no more Jacob. Come on. But Israel. But who? But Israel. So Jacob's name, our forefather, was changed to Israel. Read. For as a prince hast thou power with God. Because we are a prince of the power. 
So we have prince that have power with God. Go ahead. And with men, and we have power over men on earth, meaning the other nations. We rule over them. You understand? We are slaves right now, but the day will come we are going to rule all nations with the roar of iron. Now go back, Baruch 3, 36. Baruch 3, verse 36. Read that. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 36. Come on. He has found out all the way of knowledge. He has found out all the way of knowledge. Come on. And hath given it unto Jacob So his this knowledge that the Lord has given unto Jacob his servants, Give me that in Malachi 2 verse 7. He has found out all the way of knowledge. All the way. All of it. You understand? All the way of knowledge is as is given at unto Jacob his servant. Read that. Malachi 2 and verse 7. The book of Malachi chapter 2 verse 7. Come on. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. Right. And they should seek the law at his mouth. They should seek the law at his mouth. Come on. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. That's it right there. So the knowledge is the laws of God. You understand? And out of God's laws, statutes and commandments, you'll find wisdom. Give me Sarah 126. You keep God's commandments, you will receive wisdom. Okay. So the Lord found out all the way of wisdom and it given unto Jacob his servant. Read that. Ecclesiastes 1. Read verse 26. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 26. Watch this. If thou desire wisdom, if you desire wisdom, is wisdom is what you desire, black men and black women. Read, keep the commandments. You see that? You see where wisdom come from? When you keep God's commandments. Read, and the Lord shall give it unto thee. And the Lord shall give you the wisdom unto you. Now go back. Baruch 3, verse 36 again. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 36. Read, he has found out all the way of knowledge. He has found out all the way of knowledge. You understand? That knowledge is the laws of God which gives you wisdom. Come on. And I've given it unto Jacob his servant. Unto Jacob his servant. Read. And to Israel. And to who? And to Israel. And to Israel. Because Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Read. And to Israel his beloved. And to Israel his what? His beloved. His what? His beloved. His beloved. So who's the beloved of God? Jacob. The sons and daughters of Jacob. Israelites. You understand? That's who's the beloved in the sight of the Mosai. So go back now. Jude verse 17. The book of Jude verse 17. So the Apostle Jude, now we know who the Apostle Jude was writing to. Come on. But beloved, mm -hmm. remember ye the ways. So now, when you read the word beloved, you know who he's making reference to. The Israelites. So replace the word beloved with the Israel, with Israelites. Now read that. But Israelites. But Israelites. Go ahead. Remember ye the words. Remember ye the words. Read. Which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see that? Of our Lord Jesus Christ. Read. How that they, how that they told me. Meaning the apostles of Jesus Christ, they told you. Come on. There should be mockers in the last time. They should be what now? There should be mockers in the last time. So now the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, they taught us. That they should be mockers in the last times. Meaning, the last times in the last days. Meaning, in the last days, in the days that we're living in, there's going to be mockers. So now the Apostle Jude is reminding us of what the Apostles told us aforetime. That in the last days, there should be mockers. You understand? These mockers will mock what this Bible is saying. They will mock the movement of the Most High God. They will mock what we try to build in the spirit of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to bring our nation back to glory. You understand? Give me that in Proverbs 1. We're coming back. Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs 1. Read verse 20. Yes, the book of Proverbs chapter 1 verse 20. Come on. Wisdom cries without. Wisdom cries without. Go ahead. She uttereth a voice in the street. In the what? In the street. In the street. She uttereth a voice in the street corners. Come on. She crieth in the chief place of concord. Right. In the openings of the gates. In the city she uttereth a word saying. Watch this. How long ye simple ones. How long you simple ones. The simple ones is our people that have not come into this truth. They are the simple ones. Come on. We love simplicity. We love simplicity because without the laws of God, we simple. Without God's commandments, we idiots, the Lord is saying. We slow bellies. You understand? So the people that have been in here with us, they left, they went back into the world. Those are simple tents. That's what the Bible is letting you know. You understand? Come on. And the scorners delight in their scorning. And they are, the scorners delight in their scorning. Read. And fools hate knowledge. And fools hate knowledge. 
glory. So the scorners is those that mock the words of the Most High God. They mock what this Bible is saying. They mock what this Bible stands for. And they mock brothers and sisters that believe in this truth, that keep the commandments, and they want to receive the kingdom. Read. Ten you and my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. So the Lord says we must return back to his correction. So when you hate correction, the Lord will not give you his spirit unto you. Read. I will make known my ways unto you. The Lord will make known his ways unto you if you if you turn back to his correction. But if you turn away from his correction, the Lord will not pour out his spirit unto you. The Lord will make no will not make known his ways unto you. Therefore, you will, you will be a simpleton. That's what the Lord is telling you right there. So the Lord is letting us know. The scorners, the mockers, those are simpletons that hate God's correction. Because a lot of brothers and sisters that live in Aparo here, they go back into the world. The main reason why they leave this truth is because they hate to be corrected. They don't want to be told what to do. You understand? That's the main reason. So go back. Go back to the book of Jude. Yes, sir. The book of Jude, verse 18. How, on. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time. These mockers are the scoffers. Mockers are scoffers. Okay, come on. Who should walk after their own ungodly lust. So when, when they walk after their own ungodly lust, they are walking away from the laws of God to walk after their own ungodly lust. That's why he says, who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. So when you walk after your own ungodly lusts, you're walking away from this Bible. You're walking away from it. You're saying to hell with the Bible. The meaning what? When you say to hell with the Bible, you say to hell with your nation. That's what you say. That means you hate, the, you hate your nation with your guts. That's what you are telling us, because that's what the Lord is letting us know. And you love the world more. The world has more to offer than the glory that comes with you teaching and building your nation back up. Give me that in 1 John 2, 15. 1 John 2, verse 15. Watch this. First book of John, chapter 2, verse 15. Excuse me. Love not the world. Love not the world. Come on. Neither the things that are in the world. Neither the things that are in the world. Come on. If any man love the world. If any man love the world, because the commandment is... Love not the world. So if you love the world, you love the things that are in it. Read. The love of the Father is not in him. So that means the love of the Father is not in you. You cannot have the world and have the love of the Father in you in the same place. It's impossible. You have to choose one. You cannot serve two masters. You understand? So that's why it says love not the world. Because if you do, the love of the Father is not in you. What is the love of the Father? First John 5 and 3, we're coming back. First book of John, chapter 5, verse 3. Come on. For this is the love of God. He's going to tell you what the love of God is. Come on. That we keep his commandments. That we keep his commandments. Right? And his commandments are not grieved. So if you love the world and the things that are in it, you cannot be keeping the laws of God at the same time. So that's what he's letting you know right there. Go back. First John 2, 15. First book of John, chapter 2, verse 15. Come on. Love not the world. Don't love the world. Read. Neither the things that are in the world. Go ahead. If any man love the world. If any man love the world. Read. The love of the Father is not in him. And what is the love of the Father? The keeping of his commandments. So you cannot keep the commandments and love the world at the same time. It is impossible. Read. For all that is in the world. Now he's going to tell you the things that the people love that is in the world. They leave this truth. They go back into the world. Those are enemies of God. Those are enemies of our nation. I need you men and women to understand this. This is not an emotional movement. Mm -mm. This is a biblical movement of the laws of the Most High God to wake up the 12 tribes of Israel so we can rule the nations. We tired of being poor. We tired of being at the bottom. We tired of the nations walking on top of us, wiping their feet on us. We tired. You understand? Read. First book of John, chapter 2, verse 16. Come on. For all that is in the world. For all that is in the world. The lust of the flesh. So he's letting you know what's in the world. The lust of the flesh. So when men and women leave this truth, they go back into the world, what do they want to do? They want to go back into the world to fulfill the lust of the flesh. You understand? Their flesh, have, their, their, their flesh, they have needs, and they want those needs to be met in the world because in the truth, those needs cannot be met. So therefore, they return back into the world. Come on. 
and the lust of the eyes. So, so that's another thing. They, that's another reason why they go back into the world. The lust of the eyes. You understand? Lusting with their eyes. Lusting over sisters. Lusting over whatever it is. Go ahead. And the pride of life. The pride of life. Look at me. Look what I have. So on and so forth. That's the pride of life. Go ahead. Is not of the Father. He's letting you know these things don't come from the Father, man. The love of the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, these things don't come from the most high God of heaven and earth. Read. But is of the world. But is of the world. So he's letting you know when somebody goes back into the world, who calls them back? Satan. Because these things is letting you know these things are not of the Father, but they are of the world. And who rules this world? Give me that in Job 9.24. I'm going to show you who calls them back into the world. It's not the Most High. The Most High calls you back into this truth. You understand? But when you go out of this truth, because when in your mind, the Bible, because listen, there's no problem that the Bible cannot solve. It don't exist. Every problem that we have in our lives, the Bible is the solution for it. So when, when you find out there's no solution in the Bible to solve your problem, you crazy. You understand? You sick. Now read what you got. Job 9, 24. The book of Job, chapter 9, verse 24. Come on. The earth is given unto the hand of the wicked. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So the wicked is going to tell you what the, who the wicked is. We're going to read about it in a, in, a, in a second. Go ahead. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. It says the earth right now, the world right now is ruled by the wicked. You understand? And this wicked man or this wicked race, they cover, they have covered the faces of the judges. Right? If not, where and who is he? If this wicked man that we're going to discover, this wicked race, if it's not them, who else is ruling this earth? You understand? Malachi 1 verse 4. Read Malachi 1 and 1. We're going to jump. Malachi 1 verse 1. Watch this. The book of Malachi, chapter 1, verse 1. Watch this. The burden of the word of the Lord, uh -huh. Israel, by Malachi. Watch this. I have loved you, says the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yet he say, wherein hast thou loved us? Wherein hast thou loved us? Go ahead. Was not Esau Jacob's brother? So Esau, Esau and Jacob, this is the subject here. Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Go ahead. Saith the Lord. Read. Yet I loved Jacob. But yet I loved him. Yet I loved Jacob. So he's letting you know right there who does the Lord love. He says, I loved, loved. Hold that. Give me John 3.16. I'm going to show you what John 3.16 is making reference to. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. Listen good. For God so loved the world. No, no, read that right. For God so what now? For God so loved the world. For God so loved, loved in the past. For God so loved the what now? For God so loved the world. Right? That he gave his only begotten son. Come on. That whosoever believeth in him uh -huh. should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now give me Acts 5 verse 29. I'm going to show you. You see, John 3.16 is saying the same thing that Acts is saying. Listen good. Watch this. The book of Acts chapter 5 verse 29. Come on. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, These are the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ that the apostle Jude was referring to. Go ahead. We ought to obey God rather than men. We ought to obey God rather than men. Come on. The God of our fathers. The God of our fathers. Come on. Raised up Jesus. Read. Whom he slew and hanged on a tree. Come on. Him have he exalted. Him hath God exalted. Read that right. Him hath God exalted. Him hath God exalted. Come on. With his right hand mm -hmm. to be a prince and a savior. Read. For to give repentance to Israel. To the world. To Israel. You see that? So the world in John 3.16 is Israel. Read. And forgiveness of sin. Now go back to Malachi 1. Read verse 4 again. The book of Malachi chapter 1 verse 2. Come on. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet he say, wherein hast thou loved us? Read. Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Come on. Yet I loved Jacob. Yet I loved who? Yet I loved Jacob. So the world in John 3.16 is Jacob. Is the world of Jacob. It's not the world of Moab or Esau. It's the world of Jacob that the Lord loved. Okay, come on. 
and I hated Esau. You see that? And I hated Esau. So Esau is the father of the entire Caucasian race. The so-called white people today, this is their father. You understand? These are the, the many white people today, they are called Edomites. That's their biblical name. They can call themselves Germans, Russians, your Portuguese, you understand? It don't matter. But they are the Edomites of the Bible. They are the Caucasian race. Now read on. And laid these mountains and his heritage wasted for the dragons of the wilderness. Read that again. Read the verse 3 again. The book of Malachi chapter 1 verse 3. Come on. And I hated Esau mm. and laid his mountains and his heritage waste Read. for the dragons of the wilderness. You see that this is when Rome was destroyed. In 193 AD, Rome was destroyed. And guess what? It became the time period called the Dark Ages when white people were impoverished. You understand? That's when we ruled Europe, Russia, Scotland, England, Ireland for more than a thousand years. You understand? We ruled over all those countries. Okay? Now keep reading. Watch this. Whereas Edom said. Now after this, after verse 3 happened, this is what Edom said. Go ahead. This is what the white men said. Read. We are impoverished. That's when they were impoverished. 193 AD. That's when the white man was impoverished. Because when you read Genesis, the 36th chapter, they were dukes. You understand? Duke T-men. Duke, you understand? They were dukes. So this is the first time when the white man became impoverished. During the Dark Ages. Okay? When black people was ruling the earth. Read. But we will return and build a desolate place. And the white man did return. You understand? In 1453, during the Renaissance, the white man coming back into power in the earth to rule all nations on earth. That's what's happening right now. Read on. But I will throw down. But he's going to throw down. He's going to destroy them. You see all these buildings that they're building? Boom, all of Africa. These big, tall buildings that they're building, they are all going to be destroyed when the Lord returns. Okay, come on. That says the Lord of hosts. Right? They shall build. They're going to build. Are they not building? They're building countries and cities, man. You understand? Now they even want to go to the space to build to build cities up there in space. That's what the white man is doing, man. That's why they have the International Space Station. Right now. It's floating up there. You understand? Because the white man is trying to escape. The death, the, the destruction that's coming on this earth, he's on the run. So don't be fooled by Elon Musk. You understand? Who Jeff Bezos and whatnot? They are trying to escape. Okay, go ahead. They shall build, but I will. They are gonna build. Go ahead, but I will throw down. The Lord says He gonna throw down. Come on. And they shall call them the border of wicked. They shall call Esau Edom, the entire race of white people, so called. Come on. The border of wickedness. The beginning, the cause, and the end of all evil. That's them on this earth. They are a cancer. You understand? Find me that clip. Of, um, you know, that brother that was saying, You are not a race, you understand? Is it what Joe Morton? Yeah, find that, find that clip. Read that verse again, verse 4. The book of Malachi, chapter 1, verse 4. Right. Yes. Whereas Edom said, Whereas the white man said, Replace the word Edom with the white man. The so that in his home, so we understand who we are, who the Bible, the Lord is talking about here. Come on, the book of Malachi, chapter 1, verse 4. Read. Whereas the white man said, that's it. You see that? Now it, 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 it makes more sense. Read it again, read it again. Come on. The book of Malachi chapter 1 verse 4. Come on. Whereas the white man said, the white man says, go ahead. We are impoverished. We are impoverished. Go ahead. But we will return and build a desolate place. 1453, the Renaissance. Read. Thus says the Lord of hosts. They shall build. Meaning the white man will rebuild everything he lost. Go ahead. But I will throw down. The Lord says he's going to throw them down. He's going to give them a fight of their life. It will not be even a fight. You understand? Read. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. He says they shall call them, them, meaning the entire race. The what now? The border of wickedness. The border of wickedness. Go ahead. And the people. No, are no, no, the individual. And the people. You see, it's not the individual. It's the people. The nation. Read. And the people against whom the Lord has indignation forever. The Lord says he's got great anger against them forever. It doesn't matter how many times they pray. The Lord says he won't hear their prayers because he's got indignation against them forever, for life. 
You understand? Did you fight it? Play it. Fine. I'll say something. You. You people. You're not a race. You are a virus. You destroy the world. Everything beautiful, you poison. You drag us from our homes, you rape our daughters, murder our sons. You crack our spines and do all you can to break our will. You stab us. Then you put the knife in our hand and tell us it's our fault. And if you don't do it yourself, you stand by, close your eyes, and pretend there's nothing wrong. And then you pray to your God Say. to silence our screams so that you can enjoy the happiness that we built for you with our blood. But it's not your fault. It's the only way you know how to be. Yes, there's also with me. And the only thing that will change anything mm. is if another virus comes along mm. and does to you what you do to us. And I hope that happens very soon. Oh, please, let's give the Lord a hand. Oh, please, to the most adorable brother. You see, that's beautiful right there. That's beautiful, man. That is beautiful. Guess what? When he said that virus, the Lord is coming back. And guess what? They are going to be wiped off from the face of the earth. Now go back to the power this morning. Malachi 1 verse 4. We have to The book of Malachi, chapter 1 verse 4. Okay, you can take him off the screen, brothers. Read the book of Malachi, chapter 1 verse 4. Come on. Whereas Edom said, we are impoverished, right? but we will return and build a desolate place. And remember, they themselves did not build these places. They used our forefathers to do it. That's why it says, you what? You build it with our blood. You understand? Read. Thus says the Lord of hosts. What? They shall build. They shall build. Meaning they're going to make us to build their empires with cheap slave labor. You understand? That's how they're going to do it. That's how they're still doing it up to this day. Read, but I will throw it down. The Lord says he's going to destroy them. That's the virus. You understand that? Read, and they shall call them the border of wickedness. What is a border? A border is the beginning and end of something. That's what a border is. I'm going to show you what it says. They shall call this race of, this race of people the border of wickedness. Go ahead. And the people against whom? The people means the race. They are not a race. They are a virus. Okay, go ahead. And the people against whom the Lord has indignation forever. So they are called the border of wickedness. You understand? Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon 14 real quick. Wisdom of Solomon 14. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14. Because I have not forgotten the point, man. Wisdom of Solomon 14. Verse 27. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14 verse 27. Come on. For the worshipping of idols. The worshipping of idols. Who brought idolatry from the beginning of time? That was the spirit of the white man in the garden. You understand? Read. For the worshipping of idols. The worshipping of idols. Come on. Not to be named. Read. Is the beginning. Is the what? Is the beginning. The beginning. That's Genesis. Go ahead. The cause. The cause. And the end of all evil. The border of wickedness. You see, that's the white man. This is him right here. Read it again. Because he's the one that pushes idolatry all over the world. You understand? They even have a show on TV called American Idols. He's not even called American Idols anymore. He's just called Idols. Now that they just call it Idols now. You understand? There's even a show now, I think it's on Netflix or Prime, Amazon Prime, so it's called American Gods. You understand? They're not even hiding this stuff, man. Because they know they are too bold because the white man's pride is too much for himself. You understand? His pride has deceived him. Okay? Now, go back now. Go back to verse John 2. No, no, go back to Job 9.24. Job 9.24. Let's go there first. 
Job chapter 9, verse 24. I'm still showing you the reason why brothers and sisters leave out of this place. They leave the truth. They don't want to keep the commandments. Is because of the things that are in the world. And who calls them into back into the world? The children of Satan. You understand? The white man. That's who calls them back into the world, man. Read that. The book of Job, chapter 9, verse 24. Read. The earth is given unto the hand of the wicked. Who's the wicked now? Iso Iro. That's the wicked. Okay, read. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. Because the Jehovah's, wit 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 the Jehovah's wickedness, they say, when you read that verse again, I'm going to show you, because back in the day when I was still searching, I, I was there for a couple of months. You understand? I'm going to show you how they read this verse. Read it for me. Come on. The book of Job, chapter 9, verse 24. And remember, they don't use the King James Version Bible. They use their own. And they've changed words up in there. Read. Watch, watch this. Come on. The earth is given unto the hand of the wicked. So you know what their Bible reads? It says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked one. You understand? They say the wicked one. Meaning there's one person. Because they say Satan was kicked out of heaven. That's what they say. They say Satan was kicked out of heaven. That's why World War I happened. That's why World War II happened. Because that's how they explained it to me. You understand? They say that's why there was the Cold War. Because Satan was kicked out of heaven. He came down on earth and started caused many wars. No! The white man is the one that has been causing many wars on this earth. Satan was never kicked out of heaven, man. He was never kicked out of heaven. Read that Bible again. Verse 24. The book of Job, chapter 4, chapter 9, verse 24. Read. Excuse me, sir. The earth is given unto the hand of the wicked. The white man, read. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. You know how he covered the faces of the judges? Give me, give me, give me Psalm 74. This is how this white man covered the faces of the judges. Because who the judges? Who the judges of the earth? Psalm 74. The book of Psalms, chapter 74, verse 2. Read. Remember thy congregation. Which thou hast purchased of old. The congregation which the Lord purchased of old is the twelve tribes of Israel when we were redeemed out of the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Read the rod of thine inheritance, uh -huh. which thou hast redeemed. Watch this. Now I'm going to show you who the congregation of the Lord is. Watch this. Who is it? This Mount Zion. This what now? This Mount Zion. This Mount Zion. That's the congregation of the Lord. Not Jehovah's wickedness. Not seven day disadvantage. They are not the congregation of the Lord. Read. Wherein thou hast dwelt. Okay, now jump down to verse 4. Watch this. Verse 4. The reason why the, he says this white man has covered the faces of the judges. This is how he's done it. Read. Thine enemies roar in the midst of thy congregations. The midst of thy congregations. Remember, the congregation of the Lord is the 12 tribes of Israel. So guess what? Even in black churches, who's rolling in those congregations? The white man. Who's rolling in those congregations? What are they teaching? They are teaching the white man's doctrine. They are not teaching the, the, the doctrine of the Bible. They are teaching the white man's doctrine. And the brothers and sisters that live up out of here, that's, uh, that, that's who they go back to. They go back to listening to the white man's doctrine because that's what they love. And they're wearing fringes. With fringes. You understand? The fringes on they act like, no, 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 I'm still in the truth. But the Negro says, no, to hell with you niggas I'm out, I'm taking a break. Who takes a break from taking your nation back to glory? Who does that, man? Who does that? Go ahead, watch this. Thine enemies roar in the midst of thy congregation. Right? They set up their insights for signs. You see that? So the white men have set up their images in the congregations, in the churches. That's why you walk into the churches, the black churches, man, you find white images in there. You watch movies, now there's this demonic day called, called Easter that's coming. They're going to be showing the white man pretending to die for black people. You understand? Which never happened. Read verse 9. Watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter 74, verse 9. Right? We see not our signs. Why? Because our enemies roar in the midst of the congregation, in the midst of the Israelites. You understand? Read. We see not our sign. Read. There is no more any prophet. Neither is there among us any that knoweth how long. Meaning, how long is this madness going to go along for? You understand? But now that the Lord is raising up the prophets, guess what? Our people begin to come into this truth. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
meaning the time is coming close for us to be delivered so we can go back home. Understand that? Okay? That's how we cover the phases of the judges. Go back to Job 9, verse 24 again. The book of Job, chapter 9, verse 24. The earth is given unto the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. Right? If not, where and who is he? So if the white man is not the one that's ruling this earth, who else is doing it? Who else could it be then if it's not him? Because it is him, of course. It's not China. China is not having influence all over the world. The Chinese, because remember, when you look at the Chinese architecture, it never used to be high-rise building, buildings. Now when you look at the city of China, they have high-rise buildings. Where do they learn that from? America. Where do they learn that from? Europe. So China is also mimicking America. Because who's having a powerful influence on this earth over the whole earth is the white man. You understand? Because when you look at ancient Chinese buildings, they didn't look like that. Now when you look at China, I mean, it's been transformed. Look at they have high-rise buildings over there. You look at Chinese women, they are bleaching. Chinese women be wearing suits now when they go to work. You understand? They be wearing a suit. Who are they looking? Who are they mimicking? They are mimicking what? Babylon the Great, America. Okay? They want to be just like that great hall. Understand that? Okay, go back to verse John 2, 16. Now we understand. First book of John, chapter 2, verse 16. Come on. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the last of the eye, right? and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. You see that? So who rules the world right now? The white man. So when men and women leave this truth, they go back into the world, you see who they are following? They are following their father, the devil. That's who they are following because their father, the devil, is going to give them the things that are in the world. I'm going to show you that. Luke chapter 4. Uh, read verse 4. Watch this. Let's just get to the point. Read verse 5. Watch this thing. The book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 5. Come on. And the devil. Take and the what? And the devil. The what? The devil. The devil. Come on. Taking him up into a high mountain. Into a high mountain. Talk about our Lord and Savior now, Christ. Go ahead. Showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world uh -huh. in a moment of time. So Satan is tempting our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the black Messiah. He's showing him all the kingdoms of the world. Guess what? And the riches of them in a blink of an eye. You understand? America, Europe, China, India, Saudi Arabia. You understand? All these great kingdoms on earth. Russia, the Kremlin. You understand? Read. And the devil said unto him, All this power. All this what? All this power. He says, All this power. Come on. When I give thee. I'm going to give you all this power. You understand? Read. And the glory of them. And the riches of them. Meaning what? Power and money. You understand that? Is I'm going to give you money and power and respect. Go ahead. For that is delivered unto me. He says, because that is delivered unto me. Come on. And to whomsoever I will give it. He said, to whomsoever I will give it. But there's a condition here. Go ahead. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. Watch this. Come on. If thou therefore wilt worship me. If thou therefore will what now? If thou therefore wilt worship me. Come on. All shall be thine. Stop. So you see what happened? You see what the white man, he has all the things that he has today, is because the deal that Satan offered, he took it. That's why the white man has power. That's why he has riches. That's why he has respect. That's why the nations fear them. They have the power of the bombs behind them. They have nuclear bombs. That's why the nations fear America, because of the nuclear bombs. You understand? That's why they respect them, because of the nuclear arsenal that they've got. That's why they listen to them because of the riches that they stolen from us and they keep in their what? In their countries. So now what's happening here, Satan offered this white, offered the, the white, he all gave the offer, the white man took it. Christ didn't take it, but the white man did. So now the brothers and sisters that leave this truth, they go back into the world, this is the deal they took. They took this deal to worship Satan. You understand that? Yeah, because he's the one that gives you the power, the respect, the money, the riches, the glory and all that. They went, they took the deal and they went back. Many of them went what? Many of them, get that in John 6. John 6, 
John chapter 6, verse 66. Watch this. John chapter 6, verse 66. Watch this. From that, from that time, many of his disciples went back mm -hmm. and walked no more with him. You see that? They went back. Where did they go back to? In the world. They went back to the world. That was as many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. So they went back into the world. Because what were they offered that's in the world? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, which is not of the Father, but is of the devil. So that's why they went back into the world. You understand that? Give me that in uh, Timothy with Titus, because Titus went back. When he was working with the Apostle Paul, he went back. 2 Timothy 4. 2 Timothy 4 verse 9. Watch this. Second book of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 9. Come on. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. Come on. For Demas has forsaken me. You see what the Apostle Paul is giving, is naming them. Why do you think he's, he's, he's naming them? He's naming them. He's calling them by name. You understand? Replace Demas with Atlanta right here. Read it. Yes, because we, the Apostle Paul put their names on here. Come on, read it. Second book of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 9. Read. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. Go ahead. For Atlanta has forsaken me. Yes. We, the Apostle Paul put their names here. Why? For a reason. You understand? Read. Having loved this present world. Stop right there. Having done what now? Having loved this present world. I told you, this is not an emotional movement. This is biblical. You understand? Because these things that we're reading about, they've happened before and they're happening right now. If you don't believe what this Bible is about, this is not for you. Understand that. Read it again. Verse 9. Verse 10. Second book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 10. Watch this. For Demas has forsaken me. No. Come on, man. Stay in the spirit. Second book of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 10. Come on. For Atlanta has forsaken me. Come on. Having loved this present world. So don't be fooled. Any brother or sister that leave this truth, they, whatever reason they give you, just go to the Bible and see why they leave. Because they love this present world. And what's in it? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Which is not of the Father, but is of the world. Keep reading. And is departed unto Thessalonica. And you know, when you read the history, Thessalonica, there were a bunch of unbelievers. The people, the people in Thessalonica, they did not believe this Bible. You understand? Keep reading. And then the next one, just use Monday. Okay, come on. Monday to Galatia. You see where Monday went? He went to Galatia. And what happened to Galatia? Give me Galatians chapter 3 and 1. I'm going to show you the Israelites that were in Galatia. And what happened to them? You understand? Yeah. If it be possible, we'll put their pictures up too. You understand? We're not playing, man. This is serious business. Who, those that are not with us, they are against us. That's what the Lord is telling us. This is not the Christian church who's going to feel mushy on the inside. Mm -mm. That's not what this movement is about. Reward God, man. Come on. The book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 1. I'm going to show you what happens in Galatia. Read. Oh, foolish Galatians. You see, the Galatians, the Israelites that were scattered in Galatia, they were foolish, the Lord is saying. Come on. Who has bewitched? They were bewitched. They were bewitched. The Israelites that were scattered in Galatia, they were bewitched, man. Go ahead. That ye should not obey the truth. They don't obey the laws of God. That was the problem. Go ahead. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth. Uh -huh. Crucified among you. Because Christ was crucified among them, but they said to hell with them. I'm going back to the world. Go back to 2 Timothy 4. Read verse 10 again. Second book of Timothy. Chapter 4 verse 10. Read. For Atlanta has forsaken me. Read. Having loved this present world. Go ahead. And is departed unto Thessalonica. Watch this. Monday to Galatia. You see, Monday to Galatia. Go ahead. Tyrus unto Dalmatia. And Tyrus unto Dalmatia. Next verse. Go ahead. Only Luke is with me. So the brothers that are in here, this, they are represented by Luke. You understand? The apostle Luke. Go ahead. Take Mark. Mm -hmm. He also. You see, uh, the apostle Mark, he also represents by the brothers that remain. Read. And bring him with thee. Mm -hmm. For he is profitab profitable to me for the ministry. You see, the people that stay, they are profitable to the ministry. The people that leave, they are unprofitable to the ministry. 
You understand? They are unprofitable to their nation. That means they are useless to their nation. That's what you need to understand. Men and women that live this truth, you're reading about them right here. So if you leave it back then, you're not going to understand what's going on right now. That's why it says many of his disciples went back and walked no more with them, with him, with Christ. Because they were saying, no, to hell with this. I want to go back here. I want to do what I want to do. I don't want to be told what to do. He says, everything I'm doing, I'm being told. See cancer. Everything I have to do, see cancer. Did you see cancer for this? No. Did you see cancer? That's why this is happening to you. Damn it, I don't like that. <laughs> you see that? That's the problem, man. The reason why men and women live this way is because they don't love cancer. They hate cancer. They don't want to be told what to do. Why does everything I have to do, I have to do through cancer? The Bible tells you so. It's not me. So when you hate cancer, you love the world. You don't want to be told what to do. You are one minute to be, you are one foot in the world, you are one foot in Israel. That means you're double-minded. Your, your, your loyalties are divided. You are a disloyal servant. That's what the Lord is letting you know. That's why when you teach this to the, there's our brothers and sisters who go to the Christian church, they say, no, don't judge you. God knows my heart. Yes, we, he knows it. We're reading about it now. You understand? And when we read this, brothers, some brothers and sisters that are in here, you get emotional. Shame on you. To hell with you then. You understand? This is not an emotional movement, man. We're here to raise up the 12 tribes of Israel. Our people are already destroyed. Then you have brothers and sisters that come in. They, they, they creep in unawares. You understand? They infiltrate the organization and they make themselves what? Valuable, quote unquote. But inwardly, they are here to destroy from within. You understand? When they see that they cannot destroy, guess what they do? They start to destroy brothers and sisters around them. They start to tell brothers and sisters before they come into the truth, they say, no, you're not ready to come in yet. I need to teach you some things. You understand? A brother was delayed to come into this truth for seven months. Because Nganda told him, no, no, you're not ready. Who is it to tell the brother that you're not ready to receive this truth, man? How do you delay a brother for seven months? The sister also. No, no, you're not ready. He delayed the sister also with a couple of months too. So now you can imagine how many people that interact with that brother in the world that is telling them, no, you're not ready yet. Wait, you're not ready. Wait, you're not ready. That is some evil stuff. That's some evil stuff, man. And they teach brothers and sisters in the world out there. And when they come up in here, it's like, you see that? Now he's going to spy up in here. You see, so when you destroy that brother or sister, what's going to happen, man? You see, they don't think. Because why? Their mind is defiled. They are men of corrupt minds. Because they're going to be wearing fringes to deceive and to beguile and stable souls. That's what they do. You understand? Now watch this. Give me that in Galatians 1. Galatians, is it, is, is it Acts 15? No, 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 no. Actually, the one I want is in Timothy. I'm going to show you what they do. 2 Timothy. Give me just 2 Timothy 3. 2 Timothy 3, verse 6, 7 is 5. I'm going to show you that. Watch this. 2 book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 5. Watch this. Having a form of, of godliness. They've got fringes on. They were fringes. Yes, then they put fringes on, but they told us to hell with you and go back into the world. Watch this, come on. But denying the power thereof. But they don't apply. They don't apply the scriptures. They look like they they the Israelites because their fringe is on, but they don't believe this book. Go ahead. From such turn away. No, 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 no. You must be friends with them. From such turn away. No, no, no. Mingle with them. Love them. From such turn away. No, 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 brothers in Christ. From such, turn away. No, the Lord says, from such, turn away. This is a commandment. You understand? Read. For of this sort are they. Yes, this type of men, what, what do they do? Are they which creep into houses. They creep into people's houses. You know, they don't do it physically. They do it spiritually. Your spiritual house. Go ahead. And lead captive, silly women. You see who they target? Women. They leave captive silly women. Go ahead. Lay them with sin. Because they know that you've got a lot of issues that you're dealing with. They're going to cancel you. Be, but they're canceling you away from the congregation. But they left the congregation. But they are canceling you. 
Where are they in here? How do you send somebody here but when you left? That don't make that make no sense. You leave a place but you send him into the place you left. What does that mean? Go ahead. Let away with diverse lust. Let away with diverse lust because they wanna they wanna investigate what are the things you're dealing with. Let me show you. Here's the scripture. You know, you must read the scripture, sister. You know this scripture, brother. Wait, you're not ready. You're not ready yet. You're not ready for the scriptures they're going to give you because whatever the reason is, because why? They are creating a disciple. And they are using the name of SOC by creating a disciple. By the time the brothers and sisters get here, already they are loyal to them instead of being loyal to this truth, to the most high God of heaven and earth. So when they leave, they are expecting the brothers and sisters to follow them back into the world. Because that's what's taking place, man. Read. Ever learning. They are always learning. They are always watching videos on YouTube. Go ahead. And never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They don't apply what they learn. They don't apply it. You understand? They don't apply it. Keep reading. Now as Janis and Jambres, mm -hmm. we stood Moses. Watch this. So do these also so, so do, do these also that we're talking about, what do they do? Resist the truth. They what now? Resist the truth. They resist the laws that are written in this book. To resist when is to reject. They you do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. Read. Men of corrupt mind. You see that their mind is corrupt. So if you don't see that, shame on you. Read. Reprobate. They are reprobate concerning the faith. Concerning the faith. The Lord is letting you know these men, their mind is corrupt. You understand? The cowards they always leave when pressure comes in. You understand? When you the quickest way to see a coward, just apply the pressure. You'll see it. Apply cowards always leave when there's pleasures are pressures applied. Why? Because you're not built for this. You understand? You're not built for this, man. So, let me get into the topic. Okay, let me get into the topic now. Well, I know some of you are like, why don't you stop talking about this? Let me read the Bible. Give me X20. Because I know some of you are like, why don't you stop talking about it? Because, like, guess what? Give me First Corinthians 11 and 1. I'm going to tell you why I do it. First Corinthians 11 and 1. Listen good. This is why I do it. Okay, watch this. First book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 1. Come on. Be ye followers of me. Who's speaking here? The apostle Paul. What did he say? Be ye followers of me. Be ye followers of me. Go ahead. Even as I also am of Christ. That's it. That's why I keep repeating this stuff. Let me show you the example then. Give me Acts 20. Acts 20, verse 28. The book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 28. Watch this. Take heed therefore unto yourselves. Mm -hmm. Haste and get no, 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 no. Acts 20, verse 28. The book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 28. Come on. Take heed therefore unto yourselves. Take heed therefore unto yourselves. Go ahead. And to all the flock. The flock is the people in the congregation, men, women, and children. Read. Over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseer. Because the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the Lord, has made us overseers over the flock. Read. To feed the church of God. To feed the people that come into the congregation with the laws of God. Right? Which he has purchased with his own blood. Because Christ died so we may receive this glorious gospel this day. Come on. For I know this, that after my departing. He says, you see what the apostle Paul is saying? He says, because I know this, that after my departing, what's going to happen? Shall grievous wolves enter in among you. These grievous wolves, they come in with the Bible. They're gonna they're gonna enter in among you. For this be they will creep into houses and leave captive silly women laden with sins, carried away with diverse lusts. I'm just paraphrasing. Go ahead. Not sparing the flock. They're not gonna spare you. That's why they tell you you're not ready. Because they're not sparing you. They don't give a damn about you. They're gonna destroy you. That's why it says not sparing the flock. The apostle Paul is letting you know they don't give a damn about you. Go ahead. Also of your own selves. You see that? It is also of your own selves. Meaning men and women in the congregation with you. What are they going to do? Shall men arise. Because that's what they did. He was in the congregation, that Negro that was in here. And remember, when he was telling Sojourn, he told Sojourn, he said, listen, you're not ready. He delayed him for seven months. 
and he was in the congregation, man, where he told him, no, 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 you're not ready. He was here. He wasn't doing this when he was outside. He did it when he was in here with us. Read. Also of your own selves. Also of your own selves. Go ahead. Shall men arise? Shall men arise? Come on. Speaking perverse things. They will speak perverse things to the simple of our brothers and sisters who don't yet understand this Bible. Read. To throw away disciples after them. That's the reason why they do it. They do this to create disciples for themselves. That's why they do this thing, man. Go ahead. Therefore, watch. He says, therefore, because of this, he says, watch. Go ahead and remember mm -hmm. that by the space of three years. How long did the Apostle Paul want the changes about this? That by the space of three years. For three years, he was repeating the same thing over and over. You understand? Read. I ceased not to warn everyone. He says, I did not stop to warn everyone. Go ahead. Night and day with tears. That's it. Because the Apostle Paul, he cared for the flock. So that's why it says, those men that arose, they creep into houses. Give me that in Acts 15. Acts 15 and 1. The book of Acts chapter 15 verse 1. Come on. And certain men which came down from Judea. You see that? Certain men, they came down from Judea. What did they do? Taught the brethren. They did what now? Taught the brethren. Read. And said, mm -hmm. except ye be circumcised after the men of Moses. He says, except ye be circumcised after the men of Moses. So these men, they were traveling with the apostles. Today, these are men that was with us in soldiers of Christ. You understand? So it's not different from the stuff that happened back then to what's happening now. They were with us in here. You understand? So now when they are not with us, they are out there teaching the people and attaching our name to their teachings and telling brothers and sisters that they are not ready. So the same account that we're reading about now, guess what? The Apostle Paul is explaining this thing. Read. Except he be circumcised after the men of Moses. He cannot be saved. Because that's what they were saying. They were saying, if you're not circumcised the eighth day, you cannot be saved. So now you can imagine, or 80 to 90% of the people in the congregation, the, the men, they were not circumcised the eighth day. They were old. So now that means there's no repentance for them then. So likewise, you're not ready. You see that? You're not ready. No, wait. You're not ready. Wait. You're not ready. So they are busy, so, they, so he is in here creating a congregation out of the hard work that we put in when he was not here. When we were putting in the work, he was busy guaranteeing the steady jewelry. When we were building this in the spirit of the Lord, he comes in, he uses our hard work that we put in, you understand, when he was a groupist out there to say, no, wait, you're not ready. Who is he to tell the brothers and sisters that the Lord is calling into this truth to say they're not ready? What the hell is this, man? That's Satan. Satan is talking to them. Understand that. Okay. Now, let's get into the topic, man. I'm going to keep bringing this up over and over. Why? Because the Apostle Paul did it. I'm going to do it too. Now watch this. Again, today's topic is called diet, health, and weight. Diet, health, and weight. Watch this. Give me Exodus 20. Let's go to the fundamentals, the basics, man. Exodus 20 verse 8. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 8. Read. Remember the Sabbath day. Remember the Sabbath day. Come on. To keep it holy. To keep it holy. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Go ahead. Six days shalt thou labor mm -hmm. and do all thy work. Read. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. But the what now? But the seventh day. The seventh day is today. They call it Saturday. Okay, go ahead. Is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Come on. In it thou shalt not do any work. Uh -huh. Thou not thy son, not thy daughter, not thy man servant, not thy maid servant, not thy cattle, not thy stranger that is within thy gates. Go ahead. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. Read. The sea and all that in them is. Mm -hmm. And rested the seventh day. Go ahead. Wherefore. The Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So this right here, this is the fifth commandment right here. This is the fifth commandment. 
So now the Lord is giving us, you see, when you read about the Sabbath, this verse right here, verse 8 to verse 311, this represents all the ceremonial laws that you will ever read about in the Bible. The Passover, the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Purim, the Dissection of Nicana, the Feast of Dedication, they all fall under this verse right here. They all fall under the Sabbath day because it's the first high holy day that the Lord ordained for all Israel. So this right here is the entry for all ceremonial laws. You understand? Which, which holy day we celebrate. You understand that? Now watch this. Now because of that, because of the ceremonial laws, because in Israel, the ceremonial laws are not difficult for us to keep. Because during the ceremonial laws, is these are feast days. We eat. We drink. We dance. We, we become merry. You understand? But in doing so, guess what? There's some problems in that. Because now we overeat. We overdrink. We don't exercise. Although we're observing the ceremonial laws, the ceremonial laws, were like, guess what? The ceremonial laws, you know that what falls under the ceremonial laws? The dietary law. Because on feast days, we eat and we drink. So the dietary law falls under the ceremonial law. Understand that. So when you read about the Sabbath day, you also touching on the what the dietary law. Because under those laws, that's when we know we eat. It. There's types of food we eat, how we cook it, and so forth. You understand that? So now watch this. Give me Nehemiah eight verse eight. Nehemiah chapter eight and verse eight. Watch this. Listen good. The book of Nehemiah chapter eight verse eight. Come on. So they read in the book in the law of God distinctly. Watch this. And gave the sense. And they did what? And gave the sense. And gave the sense. When we read the laws of God, that's when you get sense. When the laws of God are not being taught or read, that's why our people in the Christian church, they have no sense. Or the sense that's supposed to give them common knowledge. They have none. Go ahead. And cause them to understand the reading. So that's what we're going to do this day. To cause you to understand the reading so you can have sense. Jump down to verse, verse 10 now. Watch this. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, verse 10. Come on. Then he said unto them, mm -hmm. Go your way. Eat the fat. Do what? Eat the fat. He says, eat the fat. Man, you know that reminds me. So was it last week when we had the feast? Yeah, the, the, the feast of Purim. So, so the Jonah goes with his Phoebe. They go and buy food for the ceremony, for, I mean, for the feast. So I'm like, okay, buy, we, you need to buy meat so we can do the business. Guess what? They go to the butcher, they buy fat. You understand the Bible says eat the fat, but my God, don't go there just buy the fat, man. He goes to the butcher and he just buys fat. Me and Zoljanea, we busy trying to rescue the meat. We separating the, the, the fat from the meat. That's why the meat what we're eating, it was not a bright place. Ne? It was uh, strips. Because 80, 80 to 90% of the meat was just fat. You understand? Read the Bible again. We are now giving the sense, man. Yo. Yo, I'm like, what, what are we going to eat? There's no meat. <laughs> Read verse 10, man. come on. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, verse 10. Watch this. Then he said unto them, uh -huh. go your way, eat the fat. You see, they you know, say go, they just buy fat. Buy actual meat. Read. And drink the sweet. Uh -huh. And send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. Go ahead, watch this. For this day is holy unto for this day is holy unto the Lord. Go ahead. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Read. Neither be ye sorry. That's why I don't want to see set faces up in here. He says, don't be sorry. Don't come to the Sabbath you feeling sorry for yourself. What is wrong with you, man? Come on, read on. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. You see that? The joy of the Lord is your strength. Now jump down to verse 14. Verse 14. Watch this. And they found written in the law, mm -hmm. which the Lord had commanded by Moses, that the children of Israel should dwell in booths mm -hmm. in the feast of the seventh month. You see that? It says they must what now? That the children of Israel should dwell in booths. That's the feast of tabernacles. We must dwell in booths. So guess what? We read the, the, we read the, the, the fifth commandment, which is the Sabbath day. Now under the Sabbath day falls are all the high holy days. 
under the high holy days, you're going to learn about the dietary law. You understand that? Read. And, and that they should publish and proclaim in all their cities and in Jerusalem, saying, Go forth unto the mount and fetch olive branches mm -hmm. and pine branches Read. and myrtle branches and palm branches and branches of thick trees. To make boots as it is written. To do what now? To make boots as it is written. In the law of Moses, in Leviticus 23. Come on. So the people went forth and brought them and made themselves boots. Everyone upon the roof of his, own, of his, of his house. You see that? That means we had flat roofs. That means we had flat roofs. That's why they were able to build boots on top of the houses. You understand? So the booths that we build on top, we put on top of the houses. That means our roofs was flat. So these roofs that you see today with triangle and all that, that's a new thing in the earth. You understand? That's not how we build houses. That's why even when you go to the bundus, you go to the rural areas, the roofs are still flat. It's only now these bourgeoisie Israelites, now they are the vanity centennial and they're starting to, their, their architecture is transforming into a different type of architecture than the one that we see here. Okay, go ahead. So the people went forth and brought them and made themselves boots, everyone upon the roof of his house. Go ahead. And in their courts, right? and in the courts of the house of God, and in the street of the water gate, and in the street of the gate of Ephraim, right? and all the congregation of them, that were come again out of the captivity made boots, right. and sat under the boots, for since the days of Joshua, the son of Nun, mm. unto the day had not the children of Israel done so. You see that it is from the time of Joshua unto this time, we had not done the way we did it this time. Go ahead. And there was, and there was very great gladness. Come on. Also day by day, from the first day unto the last day. He read in the book of the law of God, mm -hmm. and they kept the feast seven days. Right. And on the eighth day was a solemn assembly. It was a Sabbath, come on. According unto the man. According unto the man. So what we're reading here, what are we reading? We're reading the Feast of Tabernacles. The Feast of Tabernacles, what we, we eat, is a feast. You understand? But now it's not an opportunity for us to eat like that. our eyes are going to pop out. Because that's what we be doing, man. You understand? Now watch this. Give me Leviticus 23 verse 39. Let's just read about that feast. Let's get some more on that. Leviticus 23, read verse 39. The book of Leviticus chapter 23 verse 39. Come on. Also in the 50th day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, he shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. Go ahead. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, mm. and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. That's why it says on the eighth day shall be a solemn assembly. That's what we read in Nehemiah 8. Go ahead. And he shall take, and he shall take you on the first day, the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, right? and willows of the brook. Come on. And he shall rejoice before the Lord your God. You shall day. what now? And ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. You see that? So you must rejoice. So whether it's, it's the Sabbath, it's the Feast of Unleavened Bread, it's the Feast of Tabernacles, you must rejoice. Okay, go ahead. And ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. Ye shall celebrate in the seventh month. Go ahead. Ye shall dwell in booths seven days. You shall dwell in booths seven days. Come on. All that are Israelites born mm. shall dwell in booths. That your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths. Wherein I brought them out of the land of Egypt. When I brought them out of the land of Egypt. Go ahead. When I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Watch this. Come on. And Moses declared unto the children of Israel. The feasts of the Lord. You see that? He you see you see these feasts who were they given to? Read that verse again so we understand this. Verse 44 again. The book of Leviticus chapter 23 verse 44. Come on. And Moses declared unto the children of Israel. No, no, everybody. Unto the children of Israel. Unto the children of Israel. Come on. The feasts of the Lord. The feasts of the Lord. So there's many of them. There's many feasts in this Bible. And Easter is not one of them. Christmas is not one of them. 
New Year's Day is not one of them. Valentine's Day is none of them. You understand? Understand that, man. Give me the book of Deuteronomy 32 verse 10. But now the problem is, during these feasts, man, Israel, guess what? We get so overexcited, we start to eat like our eyes are like the Israel last days on earth. We don't look after what we don't look after our diet. You understand? We don't. We don't look after our diet when these feasts come up, man. Because the feast days, they also is the one, is the domino effect. You learn about the feast days, you learn about the dietary law. What to eat, what not to eat, how to prepare. The Lord even tells you how to prepare it. You understand? Read it. Deuteronomy 32 verse 10. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 10. Come on. He found him in a desert land. Let's talk about Israel. Go ahead. In the waste howling wilderness, he led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. You see that the 12 tribes of Israel were the apple of God's eye. Jump down to verse 12. Verse 12. Read. So the Lord alone did lead him. And there was no strange God with him. Because when we were in Egypt, we had many strange gods with us. So when we came out of Egypt, there was no strange gods with us. Okay, go ahead. He made him, he made him ride on the high places of the earth, mm. that he might eat the increase of the field. Watch this. And he made him to suck honey out of the, out of the rock. That's when we entered into the promised land. When we're in the promised land, the Lord looked after us. That was the kingdom. When we entered into the promised land, that was the kingdom. During the time of King David, King Solomon. You understand? Go ahead. And oil out of the flinty rock, mm. butter of kine, mm. and milk of sheep, mm. with fat of lambs, and rams of the breed of Bashan, mm. and goats, mm. with the fat of kidneys, of, mm. of wheat, and thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. Meaning the pure wine, not this Robertson, girl, you are eating something that's rotten. <laughs> you ever seen the Robertson wine? You drink it, man. The next day, girl, the a dog died in your mouth. You understand? Your breath smells like a dead rat. I'm like, what type of wine? Because it's cheap stuff. Read the last part of that verse again. Verse 14. Read the whole thing again. Verse 14. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 14. Watch this. Butter of kine mm. and milk of sheep. Watch this. With fat of lambs. You see that? Is this milk of sheep with what now? With fat of lambs. Isn't that what we were just discussing earlier on? The fat of lambs. Read. And rams of the breed of Bashan. What's this? And goats mm. with the fat of kidneys of wheat. What's this? And thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. Not Robinson. No, no, not four cousins. Mm -mm. Keep reading. But guess what? During when we when things are good, you understand? This is what Israelites do. This is what Israelites do, man. You understand? The feast days, they teach you about the dietary law, what to eat, how much portions to put in your plate. But this is what Israel does. We eat until our eyes pop out, and this one. Watch this. But Jeshurun works fat. We did what now? But Jeshurun works fat. Now we become, we have big behinds with the big stomachs and big, big gums. <laughs> you understand? This is what happens to us, man. We just get carried away. We get too excited, man. We, we love food so much that we begin to worship it. I'm telling you, man. Read that again, verse 15. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 15. Read. But Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. Mm -hmm. Thou art waxen fat. That's it. Thou art waxen what now? Thou art waxen fat. You see that? We became fat. That's why now as a nation, we overweight, man. We overweight. You see? Sorry, sisters. But my God, the statistics of sisters towards the men, woo, you bigger than us. When you say that, say, you see, you body shaming. No, it's the truth. We're not saying men are not overweight. Of course they are. But the percentage is, my God, man. They are not the same. You understand? Sisters, brothers, it's time to lose the weight. We must lose weight. Yes, we fat. We overweight. We unhealthy. I know in the world when you say this, like, how? How? No, it's the truth. You shall learn that you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. You understand? Because now... There's a brother who said what? He says fat people are becoming extinct. No, no, skinny people. Mm. It's the skinny people are becoming extinct because of these many fat people on this earth. Mm. You understand? Now skinny people are becoming extinct because of fat people. Mm. It's time to repent. 
Listen, this is part of repentance. I know people don't believe it. Guess what? Going to the gym is part of repentance too. Because some people say, no, but I'm repenting. Are you going to the gym? No. You breaking the commandment. We must go to the gym. Buy a skipping rope, man. It's 50 bucks. And start skipping. Hmm? Wake up in the morning and be skipping that rope. You understand? Because some people are skinny, but they are fat. So they call them skinny fat. You understand? Yes. You look, you look fine on the outside, but you, guess what? You are unhealed. You are unfit. You can't run five minutes. You're already about to give up the ghost. Because you are unfit. You understand? Read it again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 15. What says, but Jeshurun waxed fat. That's what Israel is. And that's what happened to the 12 tribes of Israel, man. Go ahead. And kicked. And kicked. You guess what? You, you, you eat until your eyes pop out. And the next thing you do, you just sleep. <laughs> you understand? Go ahead. Come on. Thou art waxen fat. Thou art waxen fat. Read. Thou art grown thick. Mm, you are grown thick. That's why today our sisters, they say, no, I'm not fat, I'm thick. Where do you think they get it from? Is it the Bible? It's written right there. They say, no, 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 I'm not fat, I'm thick. Find one of these clips of Karen Samuels. He says, is your way keeping you single? Find something like that. Oh, yes. Find that clip, man. Find those clips. Yeah, we like those statistics. Keep them over there. Keep reading. Thou art covered with fatness. You see that? You covered with fatness. <laughs> Mafura. Hmm? Read that verse again, man. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 15. You see, the apostles don't teach this Bible, man. Read. But Jeshurun waxed fat. Jeshurun waxed fat. Go ahead and kick. Mm. Thou art waxen fat. You see that? Thou art waxen fat. Come on. Thou art grown thick. That's why black women that, and as many of our sisters, when they say, sis, you're overweight, he says, no, yeah, I'm big breasted. No, sister, you're overweight for your height. You understand? He says, no, but I've got a flat stomach and I've got a big behind. So, sis, you're overweight. That's not muscle, that's fat. Because they be wearing um, these uh, leggings. So that the people see their flat stomach, but their behinds are so big. You got really cartoon characters. No, sister, you overweight. You understand? You, let's talk to the brothers. Brothers wearing tight pants, but a big stomach like this. You see that movie, Despicable Me? Yep. They, 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 you're like, they, listen, man. You see black men wearing skinny jeans, but their big cover is like this. That don't look good, man. That looks terrible. Because the, the bigger the cow, you're not going to see the little man down there. No more. He'll begin to disappear all of a sudden. <laughs> now when you have to deal with your wife, you're searching for the thing. Can't find it. You understand? Listen, man, it is what it is. If you, the shoe fits, you're putting on. Come on, read the Bible. Finish that verse for me. But Jeshurun works fat and keep red. Thou art works and fat. Thou art works and fat. Come on, man. Stay in the spirit, man. You understand? Come on. Read on. Thou art grown thick. Read. Thou art covered with fatness. Thou art what now? Thou art covered with fatness. You covered with fatness. You understand? Fat. Read. Then, that he forsook God, which made him. You see what happens when Israelites get fat? They forsake the Lord. They are overweight. They are obese. We don't look good, man. Here we are, we are men, we have men boobs. What the hell is this? You understand? We have moobs now. Hmm? <laughs> so, Lily, um, you want to get yourself? <laughs> we cannot be having moobs, brother. You understand? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> well, I mean, you can't be wearing a continental around your waist. No, no. <laughs> Good year. Good year, continental. You understand? No, brothers and sisters, we cannot be doing that, man. No. Because now even the white man is advertising these things like many cans. You ever see it? Now they've got thick ladies now. Keep reading, man. Finish that verse. Then he forsook God, which made him, right. and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. Yes, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. Now play the video. Yeah. Watch, Watch this. This is good. You know, black women hated this brother. 
That's why they, 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 the government had him killed. They took him out. You understand? Play the video. Okay, play the video. How much do you weigh? Why does it matter how tall I am? Oh, I, I asked her how much do you weigh? No, I'm not. I'm not. How much do you there. weigh? If you called into a size show, ma'am, every other caller could devolve. Let, me, let me back up a little bit. Let how much do you, How much do you weigh? Can I back up a little you, bit? I, yeah, you can back up. Beep, beep, beep. How much do you weigh? This is the reason why I call. How much do in. you weigh? I'm not. How much I'm do not, you weigh? Okay, you're not letting me speak. I, I, there you go. How much do you weigh? I'm not going to tell you how much I weigh. How much do you weigh? Pounds. Well, we know you're not 120 pounds. No. But we know you're not a healthy weight. You're not even a normal weight. But this... But, but, but what? This and if you were, you wouldn't have a problem original. saying it. See... Can I speak? No. Because you oh, won't okay. answer my question. Okay. But this is... But, but that's the... But the what? See... Wow. The reason I... But, 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 but the what? You can answer my question. See... This woman is not qualified. She done went through how many men? She had a husband. She said she got this man. It's amazing that you got all these wonderful men, and then you got a husband, a boyfriend that's a fry cook. No. Sorry that you don't like what I'm having to say, ma'am. But I will give you the last word. The reason I called in was because I just wanted to say, yes, I agree with you. Black women need to do a better job with taking care of their health. Uh -huh. But all I'm saying is that's not the only thing a black woman brings to the. Get off my channel. <laughs> okay, that's it on there. That's it on there. Okay, all praise. Okay. Now, 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 the reason why I'm playing this is because I'm going to show you, I'm trying to show you that actually in our nation, right? The people don't speak about this enough. This is not spoken about enough because when you mention it, they say you are body shaming. No! That's because the white man makes money out of us being overweight. Because when you're overweight, you easily get sick. That means, guess what? The white man makes money out of the medical aid. But now, you know, some companies in the U.S., they started firing fat people. Yes. They started firing fat people and people that smoked. They started firing them from the job. Because why? Because that means when they get sick, they, the medical, they have to claim from the medical aid and the company is losing. You understand? Because when you are not healthy, you cannot perform, you cannot be productive in the company. So therefore, you are a liability. So ESO does is not going to tell you because why? It's frowned upon. That's why now some companies, they, they start what, putting gyms in the companies now. Because they cannot tell you directly, you are hey, you are too big. Go and exercise. They start just sending emails and saying, hey, you know, today is a fit day. You know, today is fit day, we're going to have a fit workshop and whatnot. They try to encourage. But guess who they are targeting? Our people. Because they know we're overweight, we're unhealthy, we eat unhealthy. And it's not like we cannot afford healthy food. We can. Veggies are cheap. But we eat unhealthy things. You understand? You cannot eat meat every day and think you're going to be healthy, man. That not make, not make no sense. When every, every day you're eating pizza. How? You're eating a quarter. Because every day you a quarter. Every day is a quarter, a quarter, a quarter. No vegetable. But guess what the Negro will say? say but the potato is a vegetable. That's the Negro, man. You know the Negro, that's how the Negro thinks. Going to say, but I have vegetables up in here. He's a potato. I'm a chief. <laughs> yeah, that's what they're going to tell you, man. Because remember now, when we come into the truth, when we are in the world, we eat garbage. Then we come into the truth, we learn about the dietary law. You, eat, you learn that don't eat pork, don't eat shrimp, lobster, calamari, crab, whatever, whatever, whatever. You say, okay, I'm not going to eat those things. But then... You learn, or you can eat this, you can eat this, you can eat this. Then instead of now, now you know what you should eat, you eat it. The problem comes in is their portions now, they are big. Your plate is bigger than your head. Yet you will go and repeat. You understand? So that's what's going on now. In the world, you eat like pigs. You come in Israel, you learn not to eat pig, but you still eat like one.
You see what's going on? It's time to repent. You understand? Uh, we got it. Ezekiel 4, 13. Watch this. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 4, verse 18. Come on. And the Lord said, Even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles. You see what we're going to do? Among these nations, we're going to eat defiled bread. Because in the world, the nations, would they taught us that it's okay to eat pork. It's okay to eat calamari. It's okay to eat shrimp, lobster. You understand? Crab. Hmm? Some now you see these bourgeoisie Negroes, they be eating crocodile meat. They eat snake meat. You understand? They be eating lizards and whatnot. You understand? Snake. Who does that, man? Because Negroes have money. That's what they spend their money on now. You understand? So, read that again, verse 13. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 4, verse 18. Come on. And the Lord said, Even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles. Come on. Whither I will drive them. You see that? So, because the nations, they eat garbage. Guess what? The children of Israel will also eat garbage before they, re be they remember who they are. Before they bethink themselves, they want to eat garbage too. Remember that movie, The Lion King? You show that clip where um, Timon and Pumba were teaching uh, Simba what to eat. Because that's, that's actually talking about us. Because Simba represents Israel lost. Timon and Pumba, they represent the other nations, white people, Chinese people, and whatnot. And what were they teaching the lion to eat? Garbage. You understand? Find that clip for me. Give me the verse 45. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 45. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt. Because the Lord delivered us out of the land of Egypt. Because in Egypt, the we, guess what we did? We were eating defiled bread among the Egyptians. To be your God, mm -hmm. ye shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. Now stop right there. Read, Read that again. What did he say? Ye shall therefore be holy, uh -huh. for I am holy. For I am holy. Now watch this. Read Leviticus 18 verse 27. Leviticus 18 verse 27. Watch this. The book of Leviticus chapter 18 verse 27. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you, and the land is defiled. You see, because the nations that we kicked out of the promised land was the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, and whatnot. They defiled the land because they were defiled. They were filthy. So now, the Lord is telling us, he says, when I deliver you into the promised land, do not do the evil things that the people that were in that land doing. You understand? You must be holy because I, the Lord, am holy and I'm your God. Understand that? Okay, go back. Leviticus 11, verse 45. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 45. Watch this. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt mm -hmm. to be your God. Ye shall therefore be holy. Ye shall therefore be holy, come on. For I am holy. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, that's it on there. We're coming back here. Yeah? Now play the video. What says the children of Israel shall eat defiled bread? So when the white man makes these movies, it's not just a movie. So the Bible, when you come into this truth, you begin to realize that when you watch movies, it's not just a movie. There's a spiritual message behind it. If the laws of God are open to your eyes, you'll be able to see the stuff that's in there. Now, play. Watch this. I'm starved. I'm so hungry I could eat a whole zebra. Uh -huh. We're fresh out of zebra. Any animal? Nah. -uh. Hippo? Nope. Listen, kid. If you live with us, you have to eat like us. Don't hey, this pause. Goes. You see, how many of you actually picked this up when you watched it back in the world? You didn't. So now listen to what these two unclean animals are saying. If you live with us, you have to eat like us. What is that called? Hold that. Give me that in first Maccabees 1. I'm going to show you that real quick. When we're under the Greeks, the white man, first Maccabees 1. First Maccabees 1 verse 41. What's this? First book of Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 41. Moreover, King Antiochus rose to his road to his old kingdom. Read. That all should be one people. That all should be one people. Come on. And everyone should leave his laws. You see that? Everyone should leave his laws. Come on. So all the heathen. All the other nations, the Gentiles, what did they do? Agreed according to the commandment of the king. You see what we did when we were under the Greeks? We started to, uh, to follow what they did. We ate like them, we dressed like them, we spoke like them. We married them. 
That's what we did under the Greeks, man. Go ahead. Yea, many also of the Israelites when they do, consented to his religion. You see what we did? We started to follow Greek culture and Greek thought. It's called Hellenism. Okay, go ahead. And sacrificed unto idols mm -hmm. and profaned the Sabbath. You see that? So the sacrificing of those idols was to follow the demonic days, the days that we were not following the high holy days that the Lord ordained. But we're following the demonic days of these other nations, like Christmas, like Bacchus, Easter, but like Good Friday. You understand? So that's what we were doing during the time of the Greeks. Second Maccabees 4. Second Maccabees 4. Verse 15 and 16. Second book of Maccabees, chapter 4, verse 15. Watch this. Not setting by the honors of their fathers. Because when during the time of the Greeks, we didn't set after the honors of our forefathers. But what did he do? But liking the glory of the Christians, best of all. You see that? We like the glory of the Christians. We wanted to dress like them, to speak like them, to talk like them, to go to their schools. That's why you see black women, they take their children to multiracial schools. When they get discriminated against, they do it all. They say, but why? you discriminating away. Where did you take your child over there? Who told you to take your child over there? How do you take your child to a racist school and when they become racist, you're mad? How? You can't be mad, but that's what's going on right now. You go to a steakhouse, but you're a vegetarian. They only cook meat in there, you are complaining, but why is there no veggies up in here? Hey, this is a steakhouse. What are you expecting? You understand? That's what we read in Ian's. That's what's going on today. Because I've seen a lot of, uh, I don't, it's not the men, it's the women. I've seen our sisters, they be complaining to the government, they go to ENCA, they go to newsroom. But you don't complain about no, but they're discriminating against my child. They, 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 they you know, apartheid. About, why did you take, take your child over there? How about you educate your own child? How about that? Why don't you want to go through the troubles of educating your own children? You see that? Because let me tell you something, man. A lot of parents today, they are spoiled. They are not like the parents of back then. Because today, parents are expecting teachers to teach their child how to behave. It's your job. The job of the teacher is to teach your child mathematics and science. Your job is to teach your child how to respect, how to speak, how to conduct it. That's the job of a parent. It's not the job of the teacher. But today, parents they say, but I'm paying. You're paying for your child to learn mathematics. You're not paying for me to teach your child how to respect the elders. It's your job. But today, you see parents, they be wanting, they're going to marching, what marching the principal's office. Yeah, but you are not the way you treat my child. Wait, listen, sis, ma'am, listen, your child is disrespectful. You should have done this at your house. Because when the teacher tells them that, they want to say, you see, I'm going to sue the teacher. The teacher must be fired, but the teacher is telling the truth. You just mad. You understand? Play the video, man. Second book of Maccabees, chapter 4, verse 16. Come on. By reason whereof so calamity came upon them. Go ahead. For they, for they had them to be their enemies and avengers. Read. Watch this. Whose, whose custom they followed so earnestly. You see that? It says whose customs we followed so earnestly. Meaning everything that white people do, we want to do it. Look at today. Today you see black men and black women bleaching their skin. They want to look white. Loving the glory of the Christians best of all, unto whom they desire to be like in all things. Read. And unto whom they desire to be like in all things. Unto whom they desire to be like in all things. We want to be like the Greeks in all things. The white men. You understand? That's why people put our sisters, they put weeds on their head. They're going to say, you know, he's not giving the sisters a break. It's true. You understand? Sisters be putting weaves on their heads, man. That's not your head. That's why the black woman is crazy. You putting donkey hair on your head. You wonder why you crazy. It's that hair that you put on your head. You wearing raccoon hair on your head. You understand? Because what is that weave made of? You don't know. Why wouldn't you be crazy? That's why the black woman be crazy, man. You understand? Play the video now. Come on. Yes. 
Hey, this looks like a good spot to rustle up some grub. Yeah, go away, go away. Go away. grub. Yeah, go all the way back. You see, they eat worms. Play it again. I'm stuck. I'm so hungry I could eat a whole zebra. Ah, we're fresh out of zebra. Any antelope? Nah. -uh. Hippo? Nope. Listen, kid. If you live with us, you have to eat like us. Hey, this looks like a good spot to rustle up some grub. Ew, what's that? A grub. What's it look like? Ew, gross. Mm. Tastes like chicken. Slimy yet satisfying. These are rare delicacies. Mm. Mm. Pecans with a very pleasant crunch. You're learning to love them. I'm telling you, Kev, this is the great life. No rules, no responsibilities. Ooh, pause. A little cream film kind. Pause. 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 Best of all. Come on, brothers. Pause the video. Did you hear what he said? Did you hear what Timon said? He says no rules, no responsibility. Do you know what that is called? Democracy. Christianity. Feminism. Akuna Matara. That's what it means. No rules, no responsibility. You don't gotta do nothing. You just eat, sleep, and poop. That's it. You don't gotta do nothing. Okay, play on. The little cream film kind. And best of all, no worries. Well, kid? Oh, well. Akuna Matata. <laughs> Slimy and satisfying. See? That's it. See, look. He's being Hellenized now. He's a Greek. He's growing up in that garbage. Look at him. It means no worries. Pause. See, he's the one singing now. You see that? The nations are no longer singing. He's the one doing the singing. That's what the black man and the black woman has become, like this. So the Lion movie is a very spiritual movie, man. Keep playing. The rest of your days, it's a problem free. Philosophy. Akuna Matata. Akuna Matata. Akuna Matata. Akuna Matata. Akuna Matata. <laughs> See, pause. See, he's got a weave now. <laughs> See the weave? He's no longer a maim. The kid's maim, is it? Yeah, he's got a weave now. You see that? That's the black man and the black woman today. So these movies are not for nothing, man. Go ahead. If the white man has no business entertaining you, what business does the white man have in entertaining you? Think about it, man. These people, they enslaved us, they chained us, they sold us, they put us in the bottom, in the ghettos, and now they're going to entertain you? What for? What business does the white man have to entertain you, the black man? What for? Go ahead. Hakuna Matata. <laughs> okay, that is that's it on that. So I just wanted to show you. Go back to Ezekiel 418. So you understand that book in Ezekiel, what Ezekiel was saying. Ezekiel 418. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 4, verse 13. Come on. And the Lord said, Even thus shall the children of Israel. Eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles. Did you see that? You saw it, right? You see when Simba was with Timon and Pumba? He was eating that stuff and he grew up in it. That's why our people today, today, they are 50 years old, 60, they are 40, they are 30, whatever the case may be. They're like, no, but I've been eating this all my life. Ihagu. You see, Kalok? You can't tell them nothing when it comes to that thing, man. They love it. So now when you read the Bible, say, you're not supposed to eat this like, mm, I hear you, but on this one, we're going to fight. You understand? Because Simba grew up in that thing. From an early age, he's been eating defiled bread among the Gentiles. Okay. Read. Whither I will drive them. Whither I will drive them through slavery, colonization, and forced migration. You understand? Now, uh, Leviticus 11, verse 46. 
chapter 11, verse 46. Come on. This is the law of the beast and of the fowl and of every living creature that moveth in the water. Right? And of every creature that creepeth upon the earth. So the most that God is going to give you a law pertaining to the, 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 the creatures that he made on this earth. What to eat, what not to eat. Right? To make a difference between the unclean and the clean. So the Lord is letting you know through Moses, he said, listen, there's clean animals that are created for you to eat, and there's unclean animals that are created for you not to eat. But they benefit the environment. But it's not for you to consume them. You understand? Read on. And between the beast that he may that may be eaten. You see that the beast that may be eaten, that's the clean beast. Go ahead. And the beast that may not be eaten, that's the unclean beast. So there's a difference between those two. But in order for you to tell the difference between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten, you need the laws of God to tell you what to eat and what not to eat. So in the Christian church, what they say, just pray over it. What Bible are they following? You put lizard on the plate. You say, no, they say, just pray over it. That's why today our people have high blood pressure. They've got brain cancers and brain aneurysms. You understand? They are queuing for, they are queuing for a chronic medication. Why? Because you're eating unclean food. You understand? Because the people that are supposed to teach the people to know the difference between the clean and unclean is the pastors, the prophets. But the pastors in the Christian church are not doing so. They just say, they say, just pray over it. Give me that in Malachi 2 verse 7. This is the job of the real prophets of the Most High God. Malachi 2 verse 7. Read that. Watch this. The book of Malachi, chapter 2, verse 7. Come on. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. They should keep what? For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. They should keep knowledge. So the priest must have knowledge with him. Go ahead. And they should seek the law in his mouth. Watch this. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. He is the messenger. So as a messenger, he's supposed to teach the people to know the difference between right from wrong. You understand? Give me Ezekiel 44, verse 23. Ezekiel 44, verse 23. The job of the true prophets is to teach the people to know right from wrong. In the Christian church, those lines are very blurry. Because our people in the Christian church, they don't know right from wrong. They just tell Jesus in my heart, I wash with the blood of Jesus. But they don't do nothing. You understand? Read that. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 44, verse 23. Come on. And they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and profane. You see, that's the job of the true prophets. The true prophets are supposed to teach the people the difference between the holy and the profane, the clean and the unclean. Go ahead. And cause them to descend between the unclean and the clean. You see that? And only the laws of God can help you to do that. Not when I'm with your heart. With what you feel in your heart, you can't tell the difference between right from wrong. You understand? Give me the book of Ezekiel 22, 26. So now, because in the Christian church, they don't do that. Guess what? They are violating the laws of God. And guess what? Because the pastors are violating the laws of God in the Christian church, they are also causing the people to violate God's commandments. You understand? Read that. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 22, verse 26. Come on. Her priests have violated my law. You see that the first sign of a small prophet is that what? They will violate God's laws. You know what they will say? They will say the laws of God are done away with. That's a sign of a false prophet. Read have priests have violated my law. Come on. And have profaned my holy things. The priests have done this. Read. They have, they have put no difference between the holy and profane. Uh -huh. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean. Come, Come on. And have hid their eyes from my Sabbath. Mm -hmm. and, and I am profaned among them. Isn't the, the, the Christian church, are they not, if they not hid their eyes from the Sabbath, that's why they congregate on Sunday. The first day of the week. So they've hid their eyes from the true Sabbath that the Lord has given unto us. The seventh day of the week. They say, no, no, no. We want to go to church on the first day of the week because it doesn't matter what day it is. Nobody knows what day the Sabbath is. It's the seventh day of the week. You understand? Now watch this. Give me Galatians 1 verse 6. And because they've done this, this is what they've further done to the nation of Israel. Galatians 1 verse 6. The book of Galatians, chapter 1, verse 6. Come on. I marvel that he has so soon removed 
from him that called you into the grace of Christ uh-huh. unto another gospel. Because, because I know there's a Negro online who's going to say, you know what? Mm. He's not talking about the Israelites. This is the Galatians. Who are the Galatians? Give me First Peter's 1 and 1. Let's see who the Galatians are. First Peter's one and one. Let's see who are the Galatians. Okay, come on. The first book of Peter, chapter one, verse one. Watch this. this. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers. To the what? To the strangers. To the what? To the strangers. You know what we're reading here is this to the strangers. Give me the book of Leviticus, man. Give me Leviticus twenty-five, thirty-five. I'm gonna show you something. Leviticus twenty-five is thirty-five. Give me Leviticus 25, verse 1 and 2. Watch this first. So we see who Moses is talking to. Come on. The book of Leviticus, chapter 25, verse 1. Read. And the Lord spake unto Moses in Mount Sinai, saying, mm-hmm. Speak unto the children of Israel. Do what? Speak unto the children of Israel. Stop. That's all I want. Read verse 35. Verse 35. Mm-hmm. And if thy brother be works and poor. If your brother, your brother, be works and poor. He's not talking about your brother from the white, no, you're the white man who's your, the white man is not your brother. The Arab man is not your brother. The Indian man is not your brother. He's not your neighbor. If next door, let's say next door where you stay, there's a Chinese family next door, that's not your neighbor. Then, give me Leviticus 19, verse 17. Because our people don't believe this thing. Because you know when we're in the Christian church, they, they painted this lie to say, no, a hey, brother such and such. Brother such and such. And that brother, you, talk, you see, the brother is talking to a white man. He says, brother such and such. I had, a, I, had a, I had an Israelite brother at work talking to a white man. He says, no, no, not like that big brother. And he looked at him. The white man looked at him. And I'm like, what the hell? What just happened here, man? I could not believe that thing. Because then he looked at him and I'm like, huh? Yes, Leviticus 19.17. Even they know they are not our brothers. They know it. They know we're not their brothers too. Now read that. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 17. Go ahead. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Right. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. Come on. And not suffer sin upon him. Watch this. Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Stop. Against the what? Against the children of thy people. You see who your neighbor is? The children of your people. Not the Chinese man next door. Not some homeless Muslim wearing a dress out. Mm-mm. That's not your neighbor. That's not your neighbor. Read. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. Now go back. Leviticus 25, 35. Come on. Yes, sir. Leviticus 25 verse 35. Read that. The book of Leviticus chapter 25 verse 35. Come on. And if thy brother is wax and poor. You see, if your brother, your brother is wax and poor. Go ahead. And fallen in decay with thee. And fallen in decay with thee. Meaning your brother falls into poverty. He loses a job, whatever the case may be. Go ahead. Then thou shalt relieve him. Yea, though he be a stranger. Though he be a what? Though he be a stranger. He says you must relieve him. But remember, this is your brother. He is a stranger. Why? Because when we were given allotment of land, each tribe, they stayed in the area that was allocated to them. So now, when famine hit in their land, guess what? Your brother will come and live with you. Let's say he's Judah. He comes to live with Benjamin. So he's a stranger in the land of Benjamin. But he's still your brother. Because you are what? You are all the sons of one man, Jacob. You understand? Read. And if thy brother be wise and poor, and fallen in decay with thee, go ahead, then thou shalt relieve him. Mm-hmm. Yea, though he be a stranger, or a sojourner, or a sojourner, or a sojourner mm-hmm. that he may live with thee. You see that? That he may live with thee. So the stranger is not talking about anybody else. Mm-mm. It's talking about Israelites that were scattered out of their own land into the land of another Israelite. But they're still brothers to each other. You understand? So go back. First Peter. One and one. First book of Peter, chapter one, verse one. Watch this. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. To the strangers. So who the strangers? Our neighbors. 
Israelites, go ahead, scattered throughout Pontus. They are scattered through Pontus, go ahead. Galatia, where? Galatia. So who are scattered in these lands? Pontus and Galatia, Israelites. Israelites, go ahead. Cappadocia, mm -hmm. Asia, and Bithynia. Watch this. Elect. So these strangers, they are called the elect of God. Who are scattered in these lands. The same way we are the elect of God scattered in South Africa, scattered in Gabon, scattered in Nigeria, scattered in uh, Cape Verde, scattered in China, in India, and Australia, so on and so forth. Go ahead. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit right? unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace. Be multiplied. So you see who the strangers are. The strangers are Israelites. The strangers are the elect of God. Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45 verse 4. The book of Isaiah chapter 45 verse 4. Go ahead. For Jacob my servant's sake. For Jacob my servant's sake. And Israel mine elect. Who's the elect of God? And Israel mine elect. There it is. So now we know who the elect is. Now we know the elect was scattered in Galatia. So who are the Galatians? Israelites. So go back to Galatians 1 verse 6. You see when you do this with the Christians, they're going to get mad at you. But they love this Bible. Read what you got. Galatians 1 verse 6 again. The book of Galatians chapter 1 verse 6. Right? I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ. Go ahead. Unto another gospel. Unto a what now? Unto another gospel. Unto another gospel. That gospel is, the, is Christianity, which is not a gospel at all. It's the doctrine of devils. Right? Which is not another. Because they use the Bible to push the garbage. Right? But, but there be some that trouble you. The same Negroes that we read about in Galatians in Acts 15, these are the same ones right here. They trouble us. That's why every time we have to bring this up. Read and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Because that's what they're doing. They are perverting the gospel of Christ. That's why they don't put a difference between right from wrong. They also, they don't know right from wrong. Go ahead. Okay, okay that's it on that. The key is they perverting the gospel of Christ. Watch this. Give me first Peter. You understand? Okay, I read, I read that already. Give me first Timothy 4. I'm going to show you how they pervert the gospel of Christ. I'm going to show you how they do it. First Timothy 4 verse 1. Watch this. First book of Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. Come on. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. Stop. Let's get the Spirit. John 6.63. John 6, 63. He says, the Spirit speaketh expressly. What is this Spirit that speaketh expressly? Okay. John 6, 63. The book of John, chapter 6, verse 63. Come on. It is the Spirit that quickeneth. It is the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The flesh profiteth nothing. Come on. The ways that I speak unto you, mm -hmm. they are Spirit. They are what? They are spirit, come on, and they are life. And they are life. So go back. First book of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 1. Rain. Now the spirit speaketh expressly. What is the spirit? The word of God. The word of God speaketh expressly. Replace the word spirit with the word of God. First book of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 1. Listen good. Now the word of God speaketh expressly. You see that? The word of God speaketh expressly. Come on. That in the latter time, in the last days, come on, some shall, de shall depart from the faith. That's why it says many of many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Some shall depart from the faith, come on, giving heed to seducing spirit. That's why they leave, because they gave heed to seducing spirit. Because what was Satan doing to Christ? He was seducing him. But Christ didn't, de didn't uh, succumb to that. But the white man did. Black men and black women that were up in here, they left. They also succumbed to those seducing spirits. Right? And doctrines of devils. You see that? So Christianity is one of the doctrines of devils. Right? Speaking lies in hypocrisy. So that's what Christianity does. They speak lies in hypocrisy. Right? Having their conscience seared with a hot eye. That's why many of them, they are gone. You can't teach them nothing. They are so hard-headed and rebellious that... They cannot, they cannot receive what is written in this book because they are set in their ways. 
You understand? Rape forbidding to marry. You see that now this goes into what? This goes into the Roman Catholic Church because that's why they have nuns. Why do you think they have nuns? Nuns don't get married. But they do all manner of evil sexual things. Rape and commanding to abstain from meat. Because Friday, they say every Friday, don't eat, uh, we eat fish. Something like that. They say fish every Friday, because it's fish, not meat. Is it not meat? It is. But they say, no, it's not. Go ahead. Which God had created to be received with thanksgiving. You see, now we're getting hot. Because this verse right here is what Christians use to eat pork. Go ahead. Of them which believe. Of them which believe and know the truth. So, so now he's saying, the food the Lord the, 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 the food that the Lord has created, the creature that the Lord has created upon this earth, guess what? It says God is created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. First, let's know what it means to believe. I Sirach 32. Sirach 32, 24. Ecclesiastes 32, 24, the Apocrypha. 32, 24. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 32, verse 24. Watch this. He that believeth in the Lord, he that believeth in the Lord, taketh heed to the commandments. You see what it means to believe? You keep the commandments. You can't say you believe, but you don't keep no commandments. Right? And he that trusted in him shall fare never the worse. So when you believe, to believe means to keep the commandments. So go back. First book of Timothy, chapter 4, chapter 4, verse 4. Chapter 4, verse 3. Read. Right? Forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from meats, which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Which believe, which keep the commandments and know what? And know the truth. What is the truth? The laws of God. They know the law, meaning they keep the commandments and they know the commandments. That's what it means, which believe and know the truth. It means they keep the commandments and they know the commandments. That's what it means. They believe, that means to keep the commandments. The truth is the laws of God. Go ahead. For every creature of God is good. Stop right there. You see, this verse right here, that's why it says they would pervert the gospel of Christ. How do they pervert the gospel of Christ? Read that verse again, verse 4. For every creature of God is good. Meaning what? Pork is good to eat. Why? Go ahead. And nothing to be refused. Don't refuse pork. Ihaku. Don't refuse shri uh, shrimp, uh, shrimp. You understand? Calamari and whatever. Go ahead. If it be received with thanksgiving. If it be received with thanksgiving. Go ahead, watch this. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. That's it. They say just pray over it. Christ died. That's what they say. That's how they pervert the gospel of Christ. Because they say just pray over it. Because every creature of God is good. Let's understand. Yes, every creature of God is good. That's true. Because every creature that God has created is good. For its purpose though. You understand that? For its purpose. I'm going to give an example. Give it the book of Sirach 39. Ecclesiastes 39. Watch this. Ecclesiastes 39. Read verse 28. It says, Every creature of God is good. Right? Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 39, verse 28. Read. There be spirits that are created for vengeance. It says, There are spirits that are on this earth that are created for vengeance. Read. Which in their fury, in their anger, go ahead, lay on sore stroke. They will destroy you. Come on. In the time of destruction. In the time of destruction, these spirits, they are activated to do their work. They, they do their jobs. Why they were created in the first place. Go ahead. They pour out their force mm. and appease the wrath of him that made it. Meaning what? They are there to satisfy, to satisfy the most high God's wrath. They quench his anger. Keep reading. Watch this. Go ahead. Fire. And hey, fire is, guess what? Fire is a spirit. Fire is a spirit. Hail is a spirit. You see what's going on in KZN? Them storms over there. What's going on in KZN, man? There's so many natural disasters that are taking place over there, man. Keep reading. And famine. Mm, famine, meaning what? Lack of food. Guess what? Famine is a spirit. Famine is a spirit of vengeance from the most high God of heaven and earth. Read. And death. And death is another spirit. Death is a spirit. Death is a spirit that comes from the most high God. Read. All these were created for vengeance. You see that? All these were created for vengeance. Are not these the creatures of God? Which is good. 
were reading their papers this year. Go ahead. Teeth of wild beasts. You see, there's a teeth of wild beasts. A lion is good. Because its teeth is to what is to appease the wrath of him that made it. Read. And scorpion. And what? And scorpion. And a scorpion. So don't be eating a scorpion, man. Because it is good for the purpose which, which God created it for on this earth. So the day that purpose comes, you will see it in full force. Go ahead. Serpent. Serpent, that's a snake. Go ahead. And the sword. Mm. Punishing the wicked to destruction. That's it. So when he says every creature of God is good, we read it right here. We read the creatures of God. We're giving an example of why the scorpion was created for its purpose. So it's good for it was made good for its purpose. You understand? Now watch this. Do you see it with sorry name? Yes, sir. Read. Reading from Google.com. The purpose of pig is to eat garbage. Why do pigs eat human waste? Pigs cheweth not the car. They don't have two stomachs like the other animals do like a goat. Right? Because they possess simple guts, mm. unable to digest cellulose. Go ahead. They eat calorie-dense food, not only nuts and grains, but also less salubrious items such as carrion, human corpses and feces. That's what pigs eat. So when you eat pig, guess what you eat? Human feces. Poop. That's what, yeah, uh -huh, you eat bacon, that's what you eat. you basically eating your own poop. Yep. You're going to throw up in your mouth, eh? Yes. You must see how disgusting this thing is for you to eat. You understand? You're not supposed to eat that, man. Okay, that is, that's it on that. Now go back to First Timothy 4. Verse 4 again. First book of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 4. Come on. For every creature of God is good. They're going to tell you every creature of God is good. The way you answer them is, that is yeah, that you are right. Every creature of God is good for its purpose. The pig was made for its purpose to eat garbage, to do what pig it up is doing. The shrimp and the lobster and the calamari is for the purpose to clean the ocean at the bottom of the ocean. That is purpose. It's good for that, not for you to eat. Right? Nothing to be refused. Watch this. If it be received with thanksgiving. We praise the Lord for that the Lord made these creatures. You understand? To save the earth and to save his men on earth. Read. For it is sanctified. For it is what? For it is sanctified. See, that's where they get you. They say, you see, it is sanctified. What does the word sanctify mean? It means to cleanse. Read. By the word of God and prayer. Get John 17, 17. Let's see what it means to cleanse. To sanctify. It is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. John 17, 17. Watch this. The book of John, chapter 17, verse 17. Go ahead. Sanctify them through thy truth. Mm -hmm. Thy word is truth. It is sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So in order for you to know the creatures of God that is good, and have been sanctified for you to eat, where must you go? You go to the law. You go to the dietary law that's going to tell you the food that has been sanctified for you to eat and the ones that have not been sanctified for you to eat. You read the law. But because in the kitchen chair they say the laws of God are done away with, they're not going to go to the law. But they're going to hide behind the fact that they just want to eat pork. And that's it. So, because when you go to the Lord, they go, no, 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 no. That's the Old Testament. But when it comes to time to tithing, guess where they go? They go to Malachi. You, they say you're robbing God. But nobody in the kitchen chair, especially the black women, because they're the ones that fill up the church. They don't wait to raise up their hands. Wait a minute, Pastor, why are you reading the Old Testament? Why are you reading the Old Testament? Because he said the Lord of God are done away with. Don't read the Old Testament. Why are you going to Malachi when you say the Old Testament is done away with? Because all they want is your money, and that's it. You understand? Now watch this. Okay, go back to 1 Timothy 4, verse 4 again. First book of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 4. Read. For every creature of God is good. Every creature of God is good. Go ahead. And nothing to be refused. And nothing to be refused. Read. If it be received with thanksgiving. Uh-huh. 
For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. So if you want to know, because remember it says, for them that, the, for them that, what, for them that believe and know the truth. So if you keep the commandments, you know the commandments, you're going to know the type of food that is good for you to eat and the type of food that God says they are unclean unto you. But because there are people don't keep the laws in the kitchen church, they're going to tell you, no. Because I just prayed over it, I'm good. They're lying to themselves and they're lying to you. Watch this. Um, before we go to the law, right? I want to go to the law in a little bit. Let's go to another Christian verse that they be abusing. Give me the book of Mark. Mark 7. Mark 7 verse 14. Remember, this is a parable. Mark 7 14. Listen good. The book of Mark chapter 7 verse 14. Come on. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Watch this. Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. He says, open your spiritual ears and understand what I'm about to deliver unto you. So in order for them to understand, they must be doing what? They must be keeping the commandments. You will never understand the Bible if you don't keep the commandments. Right? There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him. You see, that's where they go. On. If you slay them on first Timothy, they're going to take you here, right here. Go ahead. Read. But the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. So Christ is letting you know, he says, the things that come out of the man is the things that defile the man or woman. Read. If any man have ears to hear, mm -hmm. let him hear. You see what he's saying? Is if you have ears to hear, meaning if you hear what, if, if you have ears to hear, let him understand. Meaning he's going to take the laws of God for you to apply God's laws to understand what I'm about to say. That's what Christ is saying. Keep reading. Watch, Watch this. this. And when he was entered into the house mm -hmm. from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. Concerning the what? Concerning the parable. This is a parable, man. Go ahead. And he said unto them, mm -hmm. Are ye so without understanding also? You do you also don't understand? Read. Do you not perceive? Do you not have understanding? Go ahead. That whatsoever thing from without entering into the man. Is says the thing that comes outside that enters into the man. Go ahead. It cannot defy him. He says that thing cannot defy him. Watch this. Because it entereth not into his heart. It entereth not into the mind. Meaning he's not conscious of it. Read. But into the belly. Mm -hmm. And goeth out into the throat, mm -hmm. purging all meat. He's asking, watch, watch this, go ahead. And he said, mm -hmm. that which cometh out of the man. He's going to tell you the thing that cometh out of the man. Read. That defileth the man. He said, the thing that, de that comes out of the man is the thing that defiles the man. The question still is, what is the thing that cometh from without? That's the question. Is it food? That's the question. Keep reading. For from within. Out of the heart of men. Now he's telling you the thing that defiles the man is the thing that comes out of the man. Read. Proceed evil thoughts. Watch this. Adultery. Uh -huh. Fornication. Read. Murders. Thefts. Covetousness. Wickedness. Deceit. Lasciviousness. An evil eye. Blasphemy. Pride. Foolishness. Mm. All these evil things. Come from within. The within come from within your mind. Go ahead. And defile the man. These are the things that defile you. Now watch this. The same parable, right? Give me Matthew. Matthew 15 verse 15. I'm going to show you something. The same thing. Matthew 15 15. The book of Matthew chapter 15 verse 15. Come on. Then answered Peter and said unto him, uh -huh. Declare unto us this parable. Is it declare unto us this parable? Come on. And Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Read. Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly? Stop. Whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly. Right? Read. And is cast out into the throat. Meaning what? You want to poop it out. Watch this. Go ahead. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, mm -hmm. and they defile the man. So he's letting you know the things that defile the man is the thing that comes from the heart. What are those things? Those idols. Adultery, fornication, so on and so forth. Watch this, go ahead. 
For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, mm. murders, adulteries, fornications, theft, false witness, Watch this. blasphemies. Watch this. These are the things which defile a man. Watch this. But to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. Stop. What is Christ saying? What is Christ? He just explained the parable. Read verse 17 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 17. Go ahead. Do not ye yet understand mm. that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly Go ahead. and is cast out into the throat. Now read verse 20. Verse 20. Mm. These are the things which defile a man. Watch this. But to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. Stop. So what was Christ talking about when he says the things that come out, they come, they come into your mouth and they go into your belly and then they go into the drought? He was talking about eating with unclean hands. He's not saying don't wash your hands, but he was explaining the parable to say, he's not talking about, listen, food per se. He was talking, he said, eating with unwashed hands. He says what? That defiles not a man. You understand that? So the parable he was explaining, because the people use this to say, listen, um, what I eat, it goes into the belly, it goes out, so it's not going to make me sick. That's what they say in the kitchen chair. So Christ was not explaining that. He was just simply explaining, he says, to, but to eat with unwashed hand defileth not the man. Because remember, it says, whatsoever cometh without, cometh into the belly, defileth not the man. Then he explained what he means. He says, no, I'm saying to eat with unwashed hands defileth not the man. That's really what he was saying. But now the people was like, no, he's talking about pig. He's not saying pig here. Where is the pig mentioned here? Where is the pork mentioned here? You understand? Now, um, here's another one. Give me that in, um, go back to Mark. Yeah, Mark chapter 5. Mark 5. Mark 5 is 8. You know what? Start with 5. Mark 5 and 5. We're going to start there. Now, this one, because this is another one. That is being used. Okay, read that. The book of Mark, chapter 5, verse 5. Come on. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. Read. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. Come on. And he cried with a loud voice and said, mm. What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? Read. I adjure thee by God. That thou torment me not. He says, don't torment me not. Watch this, come on. For he said unto him, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. You see where the, the, the thing that defiles the man is what's within. Not to eat, not to eat with unwashed hands. You see that? Keep reading, watch this. And he asked him, what is thy name? Mm. And he answered saying, my name is Legion, for we are men. Because we are men, that's what it means. Go ahead. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Watch this. Now there was there now was there nigh unto the mountains a great head of swine feeding. A great head of what now? A great head of swine feeding. Stop. Now where is this? Jump up to verse one, Mark five and one. Remember, Christ he says there was a swine of pigs feeding over there. You understand? And this man is sick. He's got unclean spirits. You understand? Read Mark 5 and 1. The book of Mark chapter 5 verse 1. Come on. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. The Gadarenes. Play that video. Thing and every attribute and spiritual attribute that's a part of them or law-breaking sins that God told us to stay away from when it comes to the actual Bible. So you will see, and they're full of parasites full of parasites, tapeworms, fluke worms, hookworms. They have a, they have, and, and when you look at a pig, pigs give something called zoonotic diseases. What zoonotic diseases is, is when you can, an actual animal can pass a disease over to a human being. It's called zoonotic diseases. Swine flu, 
you have something called toxioplasmosis or toxioplasma. Toxioplasma is an actual brain eating parasite that you can get from eating actual pig's flesh. And it's a transluted parasite. You can't even see it until it metamorphosizes or what they call pleomorphosizes itself in the brain. And guess what this thing does? It binds to different morphine, uh, morphine receptors uh, uh, or, or opiate receptors of the brain. And it can actually change your personality. It can change the foods you like and it can change your sexual preference. Look this stuff up, toxioplasma. And you can get this same thing from cats too. And it, it will drive you crazy. It's because it, it binds to different types of markers in your brain and it biohacks your nervous system and it thinks for you. So things that you didn't like to eat that you knew was bad for them, now you crave them because you're not feeding yourself no more. You feeding these actual parasites. So just the whole entire consumption of a pig is bad. There is nothing good about eating pork at all spiritually mentally physically or emotionally it gives you a bunch of parasite it gives you hypertension high blood pressure it gives you hyperglycemia it shuts down your kidneys and your adrenals it, 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 re it releases a bunch of cortisol in your body and then you're going to activate what they call the immune system to try to get these foreign invaders out of the body at that which is going to cause cold flu-like symptoms and these things is what's going to bring on the toxicity which makes the body try to heal itself it's going to take all those toxins from them from that pork put it in the trash bag for these toxins won't leak into the bloodstream then it's going to mutate that mutation is what you call cancer so when you look at eating pork or eating swine's flesh it actually causes cancer and many other metabolic so-called diseases that's some good stuff right there that's some good stuff okay read my five and one again Mark chapter 5 verse 1 right. and they came over unto the other side of the sea right. into the country of the Gadarenes so they came into the country of the Gadarenes go ahead and when he and when he was come out of the ship immediately they met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit stop so now remember Christ where is Christ now Christ is in the country of the Gadarenes so let's see which country this is the Gadarenes. Reading from the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Read. Page 184. It's page 184. Page 184. Uh-huh. Gadara. Gadarenes. Gadarenes. Go ahead. One of the cities of the Decapolis. Now read that. Page 185. Page 185. Reading from the Zondervan Bible Dictionary. Gadara. Gadarenes. Near Near the southeast end of the Sea of Galilee. Stop. Now, near the what now? Near the southeast end of the Sea of Galilee. Southeast of Galilee. So that's where Gadara is. Southeast of, of what Galilee? Galilee is in Jerusalem. Ben. So this, this, this swine, this hair of swine of pigs, where was it at? Near the southeast end of the Sea of Galilee. So guess what? The pigs were in Jerusalem. In the southeast. Were they on the or on the whole earth? No, I'm saying these pigs that we did are being referenced here. Were they on the whole planet now? Nah. No, they were only way southeast of Galilee. That's it, right? Now go back to Mark 5. Mark chapter 5, verse 9. The book of Mark chapter 5, verse 9. Right? And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion. For we are men. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Right. Now there was then nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. So he says, because where are these great herd of swine feeding? Decapolis. Southeast of Galilee. They were not on the whole planet. You understand? Read. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, mm -hmm. that we may enter into them. Watch this. And for which Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out, right. and, and entered into the swine, and the head ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000. Stop. How many pigs were here? They were about 2,000. They were about 2,000 pigs. Right. And were choked in the sea. Stop. They were choked in the sea. Now. The black man and the black woman in the Christian church, they will say to you, no, Pella, the only unclean pigs that were, the only pigs that are unclean is the ones that went, that went into the sea and they were choked. So which means that they are letting, they are saying that all the other pigs on earth are clean. 
So are you telling me that the pigs that were on earth during the time of Christ, those were the only number of pigs on earth? And those pigs were not on the whole earth. They were only in the southeast of the Sea of Galilee only. And there were about 2,000 pigs. So only the 2,000 pigs were given unclean spirits. You know why? Because the pigs are unclean by nature. He didn't say they were what? They were head of cattle feeding over there. And the unclean spirit went into them. Why didn't he choose goats? He chose pigs. Why? Given that in Ecclesiastes chapter 13, we're coming back. Ecclesiastes chapter 13, verse 15. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 13, verse 15. Every beast loveth his like. You see that? Every beast loveth his like. The unclean spirit went into the pigs because pigs are unclean by nature. Read, and every man loveth his neighbor. Right? All flesh consorted according to kind. That's why those unclean spirits were sent into what? Into a, into a swine of pigs. Right? And a man will cleave to his like. That's it. So they didn't, well, they didn't send the unclean spirit into a, 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 a head of sheep. No, but into a what? A swine of what? Uh -huh, a head of swine. That's it. Oh, please. Mark 5. Okay, that's it on that. The point here is, do not let the Christian come and tell you, no, the only things that were unclean is those that were what? That were choked in the sea. Now, let's go to the law. Go back to 1 Timothy 4 verse 4 again. I'm going to show you something. 1 Timothy 4 verse 4. First book of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 4. Right. For every creature of God is good, uh -huh. and nothing to be refused, right. if it be received with thanksgiving. Come on. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Let's see the, 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 the beast that was sanctified by the word of God and prayer for us to eat. Which ones are they? Where do you go to find this? You go to the law. Now go to Leviticus 11. Leviticus 11, verse 7. Let's start with that first, then we're going to jump up. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 7. Come on. And the swine. And the what? And the swine. That's the pig. Come on. Though he divideth the hoof uh -huh. and be cloven footed, right? yet he cheweth not the card. He is unclean to you. So, where were we here? In the wilderness. Moses gave us this law when we were in the wilderness, Ben. Way before Christ did put the unclean spirit in the pigs. How many pigs were during from the time of Genesis? Leviticus, Exodus, Deuteronomy, Numbers, to all the way to the time of Rome. How many pigs were born from that time? Many, you cannot even really count them. So Moses gave us this law way before that. So from the time of Rome to the, when during the time of Christ, the people knew that the pigs are unclean. They all knew that already. But today, the Christian church, they pervert the gospel of Christ. They say, no, just pray over it. No. The Bible is letting you know there's food that are clean to eat, for us to eat, and they are good for us. And there are food that are not good for us to eat because they were not made for us to eat. You understand? Go ahead. Of their flesh shall you not eat. Stop. Of their what? Of their flesh shall you not eat. There it is. Don't eat pork. Of their flesh shall you not eat. That's a direct commandment. Right? And their carcass shall you not touch. Mm -hmm. To eat it. Go ahead. They are unclean to you. Stop. That's it. He's letting you know right there that they are unclean to you. So when you read First Timothy 4, the Apostle Paul is not saying, now you can eat pork. He's not telling you that. He's not saying, now you can eat shrimp and lobster. No. He's saying, if you want to know the food that are good to eat, and the food that are not good to eat, go to the law to know which ones are sanctified by the word of God and prayer for you to eat. Which ones are those? We're reading about them. Leviticus 11 verse 1. The book of Leviticus chapter 11 verse 1. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Read, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Go ahead. Whatsoever parteth the hoof and is cloven-footed, and cheweth the card, 
among the bees that ye shall eat. So he says, the one that parted the hoof and cloven footed and chewed the cud among the bees, he says, these ones you must eat. Yeah, that's it right there. You see when he said cloven footed, you see the, food, the type of food is God like that. That's what it means when he says cloven footed. Okay? Do you have the one that says parted the, parted the hoof and cloven footed? Ne? Okay, that's the same. Okay, that's it. So a goat is like, you see, the, 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 the foot of a goat is like this. But because remember, the, 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 the swine, guess what it does? Read verse 7 again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 7. Go ahead. And the swine, though he divided the hoof. Because the swine divide the hoof. Because the foot of a pig, a pig is like this also. You understand that, brothers and sisters? The foot of a pig is also like this. But what? Go ahead. And be cloven footed. Uh -huh. Yet he cheweth not the car. That's the difference. The difference between the, 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 the bees that you may eat, they part the hoof, they grow and foot it, and guess what? They chew at the cart. The pig does not chew the cart, but it's grow and foot it, and he parted the hoof. Make sense? Okay, all well, praise. Verse 4 now. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 4. Come on. Nevertheless, this shall he not eat of them that chew at the cart. He chews the cart, right? Or of them that divide the, divide the hoof What's this? as the camel. The camel. You cannot eat the camel. Like the Arabs be doing. The camel is not good for us to eat. Right? Because he cheweth the cart. He cheweth the cart. But divideth not the hoof. So the camel does not divide the hoof. So show the people the foot of a camel. But it divided not the hoof. It doesn't. You see the foot of a camel? Zoom in so the people can see it, man. Yeah, you see how it is? Look at the back. You see how the back is flat. You see, it doesn't, it doesn't divide the hoof like that. Like a goat. You see in the front is like this, but at the back is flat. Like a dog. You see the dog at the back is like a paw. Uh-huh. Go ahead. He is unclean unto you. So the camel is unclean unto you. Come on. And the hair. The hair. No guaja. You don't eat that. You don't eat no guaja. You know how many of our people they eat that thing? That, is, that thing is a rat. You eating rat. That's a rat. Don't be eating that thing, man. Red. Put it on the screen so the people can see. And the hair. Because he chewed the cart. Because the hay chews the cart. Go ahead. But divided not the hoof. It does not divide the hoof. So show the people the foot of the hay. Yeah, that's it right there. Yep. Come on, brother. Share it, man. Come on, stop talking. You see, that's it right there. Move me out a little bit. You can move the, the picture on the, le on the left so the people can see. That's the hair. The Negro will say, you see, but the fingers are divided. The Negro. They will look at this, but it's divided. You see, they're divided. You see that, right? Read the Bible again about the, the hair. And the hair, because he cheweth the cart, right. but divideth not the hoof. Uh -huh. He is unclean unto you. So don't eat, don't eat this thing. He's unclean to you. So this is part of the dietary law. You must know. Because if you eat this, you're going to get sick. You get your cancers and whatnot, then you drop dead. He said, no, God don't love me. No, he told you what, don't eat this, but you eat it anyway. You understand? Jump down to verse 9. Let's read about the, the creatures in the sea. In the waters. Read that. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 9. Come on. These shall ye eat of, of all that are in the waters, whatsoever have fins and scales in the waters, in the seas and in the rivers, them shall he eat. Put them up. No, no, no. The ones that have fins and scales, them you shall eat. Do you have that? The ones that have fins and scales, show them to the people so the people can see.
Because you, you can see, when you read this Bible, you can see that this Bible was not given to the white man. Because everything he reads, he goes against everything that is written. The Bible says it they parted the hoof, but it chewed not the cud. He says it's unclean. He says, No, I'm gonna eat it now. The one that God says, Don't eat it, I'm gonna eat it. You see that that you can eat. He's got fins and scales. You see that that you can eat this. This is that the one that you see on that like is that tin can. Yeah, that's the one. This one you can eat. But the one that you're not supposed to eat, read verse 9 now, read verse 10. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 10. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers, and of all that move in the waters, of any living thing which is in the waters, right? they shall be an abomination unto you. Now share that. What is that? Is that an octopus? Put it on the screen. Yep. People be eating this. They say, no, that's delicacy. They be chopping it up. You understand? You don't have to put that. This thing don't have fins. It don't have scales. Okay? Show the calamari too. The people must see what a calamari is. What is that? Oyster. These things have been dished out in the restaurants. You understand? This slimy thing. People be getting mercury poisoning. Where's the other one? What is that? That's a prawn. You see, these are cockroaches of the sea. That's a cockroach. Look at it, man. That's not a cockroach. That's a roach. But you go to Ocean Basket, this is what you're going to find. People eat this, man. You can see this thing, even the way it's designed, it's not supposed to be eaten. Look at it, man. There's no meat here, man. Where's the meat here? There's no meat here. Go ahead. What's the other one? That's a lobster. You see, that's a roach. I think there's even a restaurant in the U.S. called Red Lobster. You understand? You see, that's it right there. That's a lobster. You go to Ocean Basket, you find this garbage. Is there another one? Look at this is a roach, man. Look at that. You go to Ocean Basket, this is what you find. People be eating this nonsense, man. Ah, oh, come on, man. No wonder people are sick, man. Where's the other one? You see, these don't have fins and scales. You see, these are roaches. They are good for they sit at the bottom of the ocean. Why? Because they are there to clean the ocean, man. What is that? Mm. That's calamari and what now? That's the what? That's the squid, man. But at the ocean basket, they don't call it that. What do they call it? That's it. So there's calamari and what? What's in the menu? You see? Yo! You don't want to open these things. Look at them. You understand? You eat this stuff and it's expensive. Eh? Mm. Yo! Yo, I'm about to throw up. Is there another one? These are things that are people are eating come and end. You see, month end is coming. Those that are getting paid on the 20th, they're going to be getting paid. You see, that's it right there. You see, the way they present it, they make it, guys, appetizing. This is not appetizing, man. Look at this. What is this? Squid. This is not meat. Is that it, brothers? Okay, all places. So that's not supposed to be eaten. Okay. Now read that Bible again. Verse 11. Yes, sir. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 11. Come on. They shall be even an abomination unto you. So those things that you saw, those are an abomination unto you. How do you pray over this thing and then eat it? 
You know, Christians are crazy, man. How do you pray over that thing that looks like your horse is gonna is like it's gonna bite you while you're chewing it? Read. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, but ye shall have their carcass. Carcasses in abomination. <laughs> Whatsoever has no feet, no scales in the waters, that shall be an abomination unto you. The Lord is letting you know these things are an abomination unto you. You don't eat a shark. You're, you don't eat like a bird king. See, how, nobody eats a seahorse. You don't eat that, man. Go ahead. And these are they which he shall have in abomination among the fowl. Now these are bears. Now, do you have a video of these nations eating this garbage? Yeah, show it. I'm gonna sh- these nations are filthy, man. Put it up on the screen. The people must see what these nations are eating. That's what the Lord says. He sanctified us with his word. He made us separate from all these nations. Give me that in Leviticus 20 verse 26. Hold on. The mm, that's more than Now play, read that. The book of Leviticus, chapter 20, verse 26. Come on. And ye shall be holy unto me, uh-huh. for, I, for I, the Lord, am holy, and have severed you from other, from other people, that ye should be mine. That's what the Lord says. I've separated you from other people. Now play the video. Put this thing on. These filthy mobiles, they are filthy men. Yo, in fact, I think, you know what, Neb? Before you play it, Moab is actually doing this on purpose. Because they eat them while they're still alive, even. So they are mocking the most high on purpose. This is mockery, man. Moab is going to pay for what he's doing. Now play it. Share it with the people so the people can see. Just be, be advised. This is disgusting. Play it. Oh my God, man. What the hell is this, man? No, no, take it off the screen. I mean, really. What the hell? That's a frog, man. The poor frog, man. Man, these nations are filthy, man. That's why the Lord gave us the dietary law. Do you see why the Lord gave us the dietary law? So that we don't do this. These people are disgusting, man. Is there another one? Okay, let's see. Jesus, man. Moab, the Chinese. That's their biblical name if you don't know. What is that? What? What? Ah, oh, come on. No, no, take it off this. Take it off the screen. My listen, man. These nations are filthy, man. Brothers, give me the now. I want you because a lot of you, man, you get squeamish when we read this verse. Now read Psalms 147, verse 19. Psalms 147, verse 19. I'm gonna show you something. Because when, when at the end of that verse, when I say it. You don't, you don't, you don't have the same sentiments, but today you will. Now read the Bible, Psalms 147 verse 19. Listen good. The book of Psalms chapter 147 verse 19. Listen good. He showeth his word unto Jacob. We are Jacob. The Lord showed his word unto us. Read his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Come on. He has not dealt so with any nation. He has not dealt so with any other nation. Go ahead. As for his judgment. Read. They have not known them. Watch this. Praise ye the Lord. What? Praise ye the Lord. You better praise the Lord for that thing. You better praise the Lord that the most high God has chosen us and he's given us this book so that we don't eat this garbage. That's why it says praise ye the Lord. You better praise the Lord this day. You better understand why the Lord separated you. He says every creature of God is good. That thing is not good to eat. You understand? Now show this one. That's an email, man. This is email. Look. What is that? You see? Lizard. Is it the plate? These nations are filthy, man. You see? Look. Yeah. Did you 
find it? He has sent it. Okay. Is there another one, brothers, that you have? What? What is that? You. Hi, hi, hi. That's more web. Mm, that's more web. They are going to have a romantic dinner. That's men and women. Yes, yes, man. You're the Chinese are built, man. That dog. That dog. Yes. That's why me, I don't want to go to China. Even if they say that's me, they're eating. They are, they, they say chicken chow mein. That's dog chow mein. Because even here in Zanzi, you see black people are papa, they are papa. You see your problem, you are chachara. The black people, they get paid, they go to Chinese restaurants, they order chicken chow mein. You've been eating snake and dog chow mein all your life, you think it's chicken. Remember what Timon said, tastes like chicken. Did he not say that? He ate a worm and said, tastes like chicken. So you go there, go, you are papari. Okay, do we have the video, brothers? Okay. I don't know what language they speak, those Iromites, but there's some language they speak. So go ahead and associate yourself with these nations. Get that in Isaiah 8. Yeah, Isaiah chapter 8. Read verse 9. Watch this. The book of Isaiah chapter 8 verse 9. What? All these have I seen. Isaiah 8 verse 9. What verse 4? Isaiah 8 verse 9. Listen good. The book of Isaiah chapter 8 verse 9. Come on. Associate yourselves, or you people. The Lord says, associate yourselves, you Israelites. Go ahead. And ye shall be broken in peace. You eat this thing, you associate yourself with these nations, you eat their food. He says, if you live like, if you want to, if you live with us, you must eat what we eat. Isn't that what Timon and Pumbaa was telling Simba? Yes, Go ahead. And give ear, all ye of far countries. Great. Go ahead. Get yourselves, mm -hmm. and ye shall be Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in peace. The Lord says you're going to be broken in peace. Go ahead. Take counsel together. You take counsel together with these nations. What's going to happen to you? And it shall come to naught. It shall come to naught. Read. Speak the word, and it shall not stand. Read. For God is with us. Because the Lord is with us. Those that keep his laws and believe in it. Go ahead. For the Lord, for the Lord spake thus to me with a strong hand. And instructed me that I should not walk in the way of these people. You see that? The Lord instructed us that we should not walk in the way of these people. Go ahead. These are Russians. Ne? Read. Say ye not a confederacy mm -hmm. to all them, to all them to whom these people shall say. What's this? A confederacy. Neither fear ye their fear. You see that? He says, don't fear ye their fear because our people are afraid to disassociate themselves from these heathens. Because they say, since we separated from them, now we are struggling. We are poor. Go ahead. Now be afraid. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself. Uh -huh. And let him be your fear. Go ahead. And let him be your dread. That's it right there. Now, go back to Leviticus 11. Yeah, Leviticus chapter 11. Um, read verse 13. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 13. Read. And these are they which ye shall have in abomination among the fowls. Go ahead. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination. The eagle. The eagle. The ossifrage. And the osprey. So now, these, these type of birds, eagle, the eagle family, and what, you're not supposed to eat that, man. The crow, you don't eat that. Read. And the vulture. You see, the vulture. Put the picture of a vulture on the screen. You don't eat that. Mm. 
You don't eat that. Where well, one of these things is a carnivore, man. Look at it. You don't eat this, man. It was, this, it was made for its purpose. And that purpose is good. You understand? You don't be slachis, you don't be slachar in this thing. Okay, that's it on that. You can read the rest on your own. The point is, go back to First Timothy 4, verse 4 again, and 5. First book of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 4. Go ahead. For every creature of God is good. Right. And nothing to be refused. Come on. If it be received with thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. So is that sanctified by the word of God and prayer for you to be eating? No. So what the hell is the Christian, these so-called Christians talking about in the Christian church, talk about, no, you know, I'm going to go to McDonald's. No, no, not McDonald's. Wimpy. You know that Wimpy breakfast bar? No, it's, it's, um, like a bacon, rashini, like an egg. You see, they are looking down. Those of you that know to eat this thing, they'll be looking down. They know. They know they love this thing. It's time to stop eating that garbage. That thing is going to make you sick and you're going to drop dead and die. You understand? Now watch this. Um, okay, from there, from there. So I wanted to show you the dietary law. You read Leviticus 11, okay? You're going to get the rest of the dietary laws in there. Now, watch this. Now let's deal with the health. Health, health, health. Very important. Yep, very important stuff, man. Health. Health goes with your health goes with exercise. Mm. Health and exercise. Now watch this. Now now give us a right to Miss Fourteen. In the apocrypha, Ecclesiastes Day Miss Fourteen. Read it. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 30, verse 14. Read. Better is the poor, being sound and strong of constitution, uh -huh. than a rich man that is afflicted in his body. You see that? It says it's better to be what? To be poor and sound and strong of constitution, meaning your body. It's better to be poor and be healthy. It's better to be, to be poor and healthy than rich and sick. That's not the life. It's better that you are, you are poor, but you are strong and healthy than be rich and always be sickly. That's not life, Ben. You understand? Right? Health and good estate of body are above all gold. You see that? Health and good estate of body, they are above all gold. Come on. A strong body above infinite wealth. And a strong body above infinite wealth. Meaning what? The amount of wealth, the amount of wealth that you can have, they are not better than a health a healthy and a good strong body. That's what the Lord is saying. Go ahead. There is no riches above a sound body. You see that? There is no riches that are better than a sound and strong and a healthy body. Right? And no joy above the joy of the heart. Because when you are healthy in your body, guess your mind also will be healthy. Because if you are not healthy, guess what? You are not going to be healthy spiritually either. You understand? Because your physical body, when it's sick, it affects your mental. It affects your spirit. It affects your mood, your behavior, your conduct, how you deal with others. That's why you have stress. You have anxiety. You have this and that. Because why? You are unhealthy. That's what the Lord is saying. Jump down to verse 25. Verse 25. Go ahead. A cheerful and good heart. A cheerful and good heart. Will have a care of his meat and diet. Stop right there. Read that verse again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 30, verse 25. Go ahead. A cheerful and good heart. A cheerful and good heart. Will have a care of his meat and diet. Okay. He says you have a, he says a cheerful and a good heart. What does it mean to have a good heart? Romans 7, verse 12. We're coming back here. Let's see what it means to have a good heart. Because if you want to have a good heart, the, the, number, one, the number one solution is what? Keep the commandments. Your heart is your mind. Read it. The book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 12. Come on. Wherefore, the law is holy, mm -hmm. and the commandment holy. Go ahead. And just and good. You see that? So, when you have a good heart, it means you're keeping the commandments of the Most High God. Second to that, to have a cheerful and a good heart, meaning what? Good heart health. That is what's also talking about. It's not just talking about keeping of the commandments. No, over and above that, he's talking about you having good heart health. And to have a good heart health, skipping, cardio, 
run a little. Mm. Take a walk. Yeah, take a walk. Do some walk around the block. You understand? Have your heart be pumping, you understand that? So you can have good blood flow. Right? Shall I have a walk? Now oh, verse 25 again, Sarah 30. Verse 25. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 30, verse 25. Come on. A cheerful and good heart will have a care of his meat and diet. Meaning you're going you're gonna to care about your meat and your diet. Meaning you're going to manage your meat intake. You're going to limit it. You know, you cannot be eating meat every day. It's not practical. You cannot be eating quarter every day. When every day when you want to eat, you go to the kasi. But thing is a quarter. Every day is a quarter. You're going to die, man. Imagine you are 13 years old. Already you have a cholesterol. How? How did you have cholesterol when you were 15? How did that happen, man? Mm. Watch this. Sarah 37 verse 29. Have those tests ready, brothers. Okay, read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 37, verse 29. Come on. Be not unsatiable in any dainty thing. Dainty things mean sweet things. Sweets. Sweets, sweets, sweets. Every day when are you always eating a sweet. A sweet is in your mouth. Ice cream. Whatever. The Lord says don't be unsatiable in any dainty thing, meaning sweet things. Go ahead. No too greedy upon meat. Don't be too greedy upon meat. People that eat meat every day. Of course, there are some families that they say, me, I cannot survive. I have to eat meat on a day. Yeah. Every day they be eating. You know how long it takes for the meat to be digested and taken out of your body? It takes three to four days. Yeah, you eat, a, you eat like red meat, for instance. It takes th more than three days for it to be digested by your body. Before it goes out. So now imagine if you eat meat every day. So I wonder that's why you get colon cancer. Because what is the body going to, what is your intestine supposed to do with it? Your intestines, what are they supposed to do with all that? And guess what? People that eat meat on a daily, they have a stinky breath. Their breath stinks. It don't matter how many times they brush their teeth. It doesn't matter because there's too much acid in that meat again. So now there's too much acid in your stomach. You understand? Because every day is corpo. Every day is part. Mm? There's no way, man. You're not going to survive. And guess what? Your colon is clogged with what? They call it... They call it... Mm, there's a term. There's a medical term for it. Look it up. Just look up um, old, old, um, you know, Colon something. They call it colon or gut, gut something. Colon something or gut something. Now show that picture. Is it a video? Mm. Wow. That's a sister. That's the black woman. You see that? Look, a flabby gut. She's going to... No. Look, she's going to devour that whole thing by herself. Because today, in the says the woman shall compass a man, not just with, with, um, not, not, it's, it's also talk about weight. The amount of food you eat, you're going to eat more than me. Next one. Come on, brothers. Take my picture out of this. Let's see. Now take my picture out of it, man. I want to see the whole thing. Finish a quarter with me. That's a sister. Sisters, she making you look bad. No, no, hold on. Put the disclaimer. Now give me that in Jeremiah. says a woman shall compass a man. Before we read this, let, before we play this, let's read this, let's read this verse right quick. Yeah, Jeremiah 31, verse 22. That's it right there. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 22. Come on. How long will thou go about, O backsliding daughter? O bother, O thou backsliding daughter. Go ahead. For the Lord has created a new thing in the earth. Because a new thing in the earth, the TikTok is a new thing in the earth. So the sisters are using it to what? To show us good man. Go ahead. A woman. A what? 
a woman, a woman shall compass a man. Watch it. Play. Let's see what, what Jeremiah was making reference to. Call a black man in America. What do you call a black man in America? A nigga, 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 a nigga, nigga, nigga. Yo. You don't believe it, man. Yo! But <laughs> that sister was eating like a pig, man. It's the truth. Look at it. It's not me. It's a video. It's in video. That we may be justified in what we say. Read the Bible again, man. Jeremiah 31, verse 22. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 20, 31, verse 22. Uh -huh. How long will thou go about, O, o thou backsliding daughter? Uh -huh. For the Lord has created a new thing in the earth. Uh -huh. A woman shall compass a man. Sumo wrestler. You see, she looked like a sumo. Mm. Sumo wrestler. Sumo, you know, big body sumo flow. Come on, man. <laughs> Is there another one? Sure. Hey. Who sisters, they are falling in line to become Tegelege. What is this, man? Yep. Ah, but we, we passed that now. Okay. okay. Go, Go back, back to Zerah 37 verse 29. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 37 verse 29. There's this TikTok, this TikTok video where they're showing a brother who was eating, you know, like, mm, you know when they make pop. And they, they make like these uh, big, uh, you know, like a big disc. They're showing him how he's finishing it. How he was eating that thing. Look for that video, man. Black man eating pop. Look for the video. I know he's on TikTok. He's on TikTok or somewhere. He's one of the shorts. I think in a matter, I think it was three seconds. The whole thing, it was finished, man. I'm like, what the hell? Yep, yep, that's what we read, man. Read that verse again. Serenic 37, verse 29. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 37, verse 29. Be not unsatiable in any dainty thing. Read. Nor too greedy upon me. But listen, sisters, no, that sister made you look bad. Yo! But that's what's going on. Because today, ne, you see, our sisters, they go to Dibonez, ne? They, they go to KFC. They order Streetwise 7. Hmm? Streetwise whatever. They sit there by themselves. The children are not there. They eat, they eat, they eat, they finish it. Then they, 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 they order. <laughs> Man, I was like, I'm watching a movie. This is the, you know what she does? She buys a Streetwise 4. She eats it, downs it. Quick something's minute is done. She buys a triple dagger called Dibonez. She goes home. She's going to start the food because she's going to start to eat afresh. Like she hasn't eaten. So she pre-eats and then buys a triple day uh, pizza and then she gets home, she eats like everybody. That's why we see them every day, man. It's go just month and go to borders, you see it. Go to the cases in the malls, you see black women about 20. Good. Kakot, away every mall, stomach out, bum shot. You understand? With these long um, uh, hair extensions that hit the bum. They are colorful, they are pink and yellow and green. I'm like, yo, you look like Pikachu. What is that? I don't know if it's the one, but yeah. Yeah, that's him. Pause. Man, I couldn't believe if you see this, man, listen. <laughs> come on, brothers. Come on, brothers. This guy, this brother is looking at, he's making us look, look, look bad. <laughs> man, this video, this thing, man, gave me stitches for days, man.
Yo, go back. Watch this. No. Yo! Done! We finished it! And he's eating serious, eh? Je ne sais pas si tu as un peu de temps. 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 Tu The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 9. What's this? Why is earth and ashes proud? What's this? There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. That's what you just saw. So when the Bible says there is no more wicked thing than a covetous man, that's what, that's what you just saw there. Yeah. For such an one certain his own soul to say, yeah. because while he liveth, he casteth away his power. Mm. Verse 13 now. Select 37, verse 30. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 37, verse 30. By surfeiting. 37. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 37, verse 30. Read. For excess of meat. For excess of meat. Too much meat. Go ahead. Bring a sickness. It does what? Bring a sickness. So too much meat brings you sickness. A lot of our people, the reason why they are sick like this, they've got chronic diseases. They're taking chronic medication is because of too much meat. You understand? Right? And surfeiting surfeiting will turn into cholera. Will turn into cholera. Overeating will turn into cholera. These are stomach pains and stomach cramps, stomach cancers. Okay, that's why some people don't have a colon. They go and have a what? They have their colon removed. You understand? Yeah, because it's stacked with garbage. Right? By salvation, have many perished, have many died. Read. But he that taketh heed prolongeth his life. He that taketh heed to his meat and died, you're going to prolong your life. You'll live longer. That's what the Bible is saying. You understand? Now watch this. Yep, yep. Now play. Yeah, let's read the statistics. The health stats in Zanzibar for sure. This is the Western Cape government. Mm. We need to start taking care of our health, man. You know, seriously. Yes, sir. Yeah. Can we see it? Yes, sir. Okay. Read. Reading from the Western Cape government. Obesity. Is your waistline is your waistline killing you? Is your waistline killing you? Go ahead. Obesity stats in South Africa are concerning as roughly 31% of men and 68% of women in the country are obese. Stop. Stop. 
31% of men are obese. What is the number for the women? And 68% of women in the country are obese. Stop. Double. So that means the average, the average, the average woman today, she weighs twice than the average man. Sister, I'm not your type. If I cannot lift you up, no, I cannot, I'm not your type. No. Read that, but read that thing again. Come, Come on, man. Obesity stands in South Africa right? are concerning as roughly 31% of men. 31% of men and 68% of women in the country are obese. Are obese. Come on. Being overweight or obese can lead to a range of lifestyle diseases, uh -huh. including diabetes and heart disease. So many of our people today, they've got heart diseases and they're what? Heart diseases and diabetes. But I'm not going to type 2. Type one, type this. How many you see children with diabetes? But when you check their weight, you realize, oh, it's because they are overweight. Now keep reading. This is a big problem, not only in adults but also in children. <laughs> with more than thirteen percent of South African children uh -huh. between the ages of six. What? Between the ages of six. Thirteen percent between the ages of what now? Between the ages of 6 to six, 14 years. 6 years old to 14 years, they are over, overweight, obese. I get they are busy on the couch if moving their finger. They don't move their feet to go around the block. They are busy with PlayStation. Their fingers are fat. You understand? Their fingers are fat. Go ahead. Considered overweight or obese. Overweight or obese. As a parent. You can reduce the risk of obesity in your children by making sure your family becomes becomes more, becomes more physically active. Exercise, exercise, exercise. Go ahead. And that nutritious meals make up the bulk of your household's diet. Not ice creams and whatever. Go ahead. You can also ensure that your children eat healthy meals. At school. at school, go ahead. Driving the numbers home even more is Stats essays findings that show 62.2 women, 62.2 percent women, and 25.1 men in the Western Cape to be overweight or obese. While the figures are so, allowed. so, so in the Western Cape, the first statistics was in the country. The next statistics they are being specific to the Western Cape. It says 62.2% of women and 25.1% 25 of men are obese or overweight. But you see the numbers there? 62%. That's more than double. Yes, sir. So more than double, more than double in the Western Cape, in the Western Cape, Bukalog. The women are bigger than the men. Yes, sir. So guess what? We are unhealthy. We are unhealthy. The most said God, being unhealthy, guess what? Is a sin. Being overweight is a sin, by the way. Not exercising is a sin. Not eating healthy is a sin. Yes. Eating unclean food, of course, is a sin. You understand? Now watch this. Give me the book of Second Third John, verse one. Third John verse one. Now look up there. One that Kevin Samuel is your way keeping you single. Look for those short lips, because many of our sisters today, the reason why they say they are not, the reason why many of them they are not married and they've given up on relationships is because they are overweight. Because men, we look, men, men. The first thing that men look for is visuals. We're not gonna see your personality up top. Yes, sir. When you when, when you coming from that direction, you know you know she's got a nice personality. We don't say that. No, sir. We don't. I bet she's got a PhD. We don't say that, man. We see by the way you are shaped. Mm. Because guess what? You must have some sort of discipline in your life. Yes, sir. Because I know there are those that are skinny. They're gonna say, but I don't need to exercise. Mm -mm. You must still exercise. Because there must still be some kind of routine. There must still be some kind of 
um, discipline in your life, you must be exercising on a daily. You understand? To keep your man happy. Yes. Now read what you got. Third John verse 2. Verse 1 and 2. That book of John, verse 1. The elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. <laughs> beloved, I wish above all things. I wish is a beloved. Who is he talking to? Israelites. Read. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. And be in what? And be in health. And be in health. You see, the people don't read this Bible, man. And be in health. Go ahead. Even as thy soul prospers. So it's not just your spirit that must be healthy. Your body also must be in health. You understand? Now give me that in um, give me that in First Timothy. First Timothy four verse eight. First book of Timothy chapter four verse eight. Come on. For bodily exercise profiteth little. So bodily exercise it profits. The apostle Paul is letting you know it does profit a little. It profits you a little just to go up and down and exercise and run and walk and do some stretches, you know? Do some bicycles in the house. Do those bicycle exercises and whatnot. It says it does profit a little. Go ahead. For bodily exercise profiteth little. Right? But godliness is profitable unto all things. You see that because godliness, which is the keeping of God's laws, will teach you to exercise. So exercise is good for your health. Now watch this. I'm going to show you, during the time of the Greeks, our forefathers, even though they were following the customs of the Greeks, there is something that they attempted to do because that means during the time of the Greeks, our people were unhealthy. During the time of the Greek captivity, I'm going to show you that. Second Maccabees 4, verse 9. Second book of Maccabees, chapter 4, verse 9. Watch this. Beside this, mm -hmm. he promised to assign a hundred and fifty more. Now, this is Jason. Watch this. If he might have license to set him up a place for exercise. Stop. You see what Jason did? Jason set up a place of exercise. During the time of the Greeks, because black people were fat. Israelites were overweight during the time of the Greeks. Today we are under America. Look at us. We've got flabby guts. After you eat, you'll be fatty the whole night. You understand? Yep, because you, 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 we eat unhealthy, man. It's fine if you're eating veggies and your, your stomach is, is, um, is in shock therapy. Like, what's going on? What am I eating now all of a sudden? But that's fine. That one is acceptable. It's natural. It will just go out. Excuse the part. <laughs> Excuse the part. But. You eat start eating veggies, your stomach is just going to start growling and whatnot because there's too much fiber in your system. And then you eat a lot of, you drink a lot of water, and then over time, maybe after a week or two, then your stomach starts to become fine. You understand? That means we are so unhealthy that when you start eating healthy things, your stomach is like, what the hell is going on? Some people actually get sick. When they stop eating garbage and start eating healthy, they start getting sick. You understand? Go ahead. And for the training up of youth. Stop. There, you see, they're 30%. From 6 years old to 14 years old, they are obese and overweight. That's why you got the youth involved in this. Because today, look at the youth, man. You see a boy is 14, is 12. Gary has been living for 100 years. He's got a big stomach. We're like, what the hell happened here, man? Go ahead. In the fashions of the heathen, mm -hmm. and to write them in and to write them of Jerusalem by the name of Antiochus. Now jump down to verse. Yep, verse 14. Verse 14. Go ahead. That the priest had no courage to, to serve anymore at the altar, but despising the temple and neglecting the sacrifices, hastened to be partakers. Of the unlawful allowance in the place of exercise. In the what now? In the place of exercise. The gym. The gym. Go ahead. After the game of discus. The, di the game of discus. This is the Olympics. These are the Olympics. Because the way the Greeks would train in the gym, they, will, they did it naked. That's why today you see our people going to the gym, they're wearing spandex. Where do you think they get this stuff from? Because during the time of the Greeks, there were no spandex. 
They literally went in the gym naked. That's why it's called gym nose. The word gym comes from the word gym nose, which means to exercise naked. Literally. So when they were doing sprints and marathons, ah, they were getting shitty. <laughs> they were just running around, just letting it all hang out. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> In South Africa, right? Yes. There is. There's a naked marathon in South Africa, by the way. Literally, they run naked. Because the time will come when it's going to be like that. Yeah, read it. Yeah, put it on the screen so the people may see. Don't think I'm making stuff up. Share it on the screen so the people can see. Yep, that's it right there. Yep. Read it. Read it from Google.com. Uh huh. Gymnos. The word what? The word gymnos. Meaning. The word gymnos means naked in Greek. You see that? The word gymnos means naked in Greek. Go ahead. Which, which gives us our word gym or gymnasium. You see that? Go ahead. Due to the fact. Due to the what? Due to the fact. It's a fact. This is not my opinion. It's a fact. It's a historical fact. Go ahead. That the ancient Greeks used to exercise naked. That's it. So we're not making this up, man. You understand? We're not making it up. Now watch this. Now, now, exercise is, guess what? It is part of the laws. You must exercise. You don't exercise, even if you are skinny, you are unfit. Because you can be skinny, guess what? But you are unfit. You are in the midst of sin. It's that simple. You understand? Now, um, yeah, play that video now. Why don't you, lady? Why, if you, here's the thing. What we're really talking about is if, if you're a single woman, your weight is keeping your husband away. That's what it really nets down to. You look around and you see all these average looking white women, and average looking Hispanic women, average looking Asian women, and they got husbands. Because they're, cause they're, they're smaller than their men. You got to be smaller than the men. I'm fine. Is there another one? Okay, okay come, come on, on, play it. Five, three. How much do you weigh? <laughs> That's none of your business. I told you I was fat. Oh, okay. We don't play that shit on my <laughs> show. <laughs> you get your big fat ass on somewhere. <laughs> I don't deal with you big sassy ass broads. <laughs> I love him. Oh, he's the best. You think you can get out here and be like Danny's big ass? Go knock <laughs> yourself out. But I would be remiss to try to tell you, as an image consultant and as a person and a professional, that you can be five three and weigh so much that you don't even want to tell somebody how much you weigh and think you will get a man to marry you, a high value man. So you go ahead and go on back over and get your two piece or three piece or whatever you got coming from, you know, Chick fil A or Popeyes. Or, yeah. <laughs> or over. I don't know. Wait, the best is the dismissive, okay, like the mouse when he's like, so. Okay, that's it on there. Is that it on there? Okay, play the third one. Where would you rank yourself on a scale from one to ten? How tall are you? 5'10. 5'10. How much do you uh, stop, weigh? Stop, stop. This is for the man. Okay, okay go, go back. back. Where would you rank yourself on a scale from 1 to 10? How tall are you? 5'10". 5'10". How much do you weigh? Mm. Uh-oh. I weigh about... Two what? Depending on the day, two. between 280 and 285. So you're a fat... Yeah. <laughs> so you think a 5'10", almost 300-pound dude, how much money you make? Like 482 weeks. So you make 400 every two weeks. So you make 800 a month. You make uh, less than $10,000 I mean, a year. Okay. <laughs> Weight is important to the most high because some people don't believe that. Yes, it does count. Yes, it does count. Give me the book of Proverbs 11. Proverbs 11 and 1. Listen good. I'm going to cut some of these scriptures short because yeah, we've been going. 
Okay, okay. Proverbs 11 and 1. Watch, Watch this. this. Yeah, Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 1. Come on. A false balance is an ab- is abomination to the Lord. Is this a false balance is an abomination to the Lord. Come on. But a just way. But a what now? But a just way. But a just way. Come on. Is his delight. You see that? But a just weight is his delight. So if you're overweight, you are not delightful in the light in the sight of the Lord. Yep. So now you can imagine our sisters in the Christian church that they, they, they are the ones that sing a lot. They are part of the group that sing. Many of them they are big. The pastor don't say nothing. They say, no, 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 the reason why I have such a big voice is because I'm a big girl. We hear that a lot, man. I've heard that growing up. They are so big, they say, that's why I got the voice. Give me some chips. <laughs> Read Proverbs 11 and 1 again, man. Yo, give me that piece of chicken. Come on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 1. Read. A false balance mm-hmm. is an abomination to the Lord. Read. But a just weight is his delight. Now, Proverbs 16, verse 11. The book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 11. Come on. A just way. A what now? A just way. A just way, come on. And balance are the Lord's. You see that? A just way and balance are the Lord's. So if it's not just, it's not of the law. It's of Satan. It's of the devil. Go ahead. All the weights of the bag are his work. You see that? All the weights of the bag are his work. His work. Now give me Deuteronomy 25, verse 15. Ah, this is a heavy one. This one is home. Read it. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 25, verse 15. Come on. <clears throat> but thou shalt have a perfect and just weight. Stop. Read it again. But thou shalt have a perfect and just weight. But thou shalt have a perfect and just weight. Go ahead. A perfect and just measure shalt thou have. Stop. The Lord is repeating it again. Go ahead. That thy days may be lengthened in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. You see that? So we know God. Listen, man. Imagine. That's why the Moses God says, an exceeding great army. Now let's think here. An exceeding great army with brothers with fat guts and flabby boobs. What kind of an army is this? Could you imagine? Imagine an army in battle array. We've got big stomachs and we've got big bums. How does this work, man? Hey, me, I just want. Can, can, can I just have the watermelon alone by itself? Please. Now, read the Bible again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 25. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 25, verse 15. Go ahead. But thou shalt have a perfect and just way. But thou shalt have a perfect and just way. Come on. A perfect and just measure shalt thou have. Read. That thy days may be lengthened in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. You see that? So now imagine, imagine this. Here we are. You understand? We say, we the army of the Lord. But guess what? We flabby. We've got man boobs. No bicep. Nothing. Ah, uh, no, come on, brothers. You see? No, don't be doing that, man. <laughs> don't be doing that, man. Yo! Okay, now read the, read the article now. I'm almost done. Reading from news.com. Uh huh. Half of South Africans are overweight or obese. Watch this. Warning labels on unhealthy foods help change that. Watch this. Let's go up. Okay, let's go. Globally, there's been an increase in the availability of consumption of unhealthy food, which has contributed to bad health outcomes. Mm, Go ahead. Half of all South African adults are either overweight, 23%, or obese, 27%. Go ahead. Warning labels on unhealthy foods can and unhealthy foods help change that. Excuse me. So where are we going?
where we read, where we started to read from. Okay, let's read. The figures in South Africa are especially worrying. Half, half of all adults are either overweight, 23%, or obese, 27%. Non-communicable diseases account for 59.3% of reported death in the country. Mm. Go ahead. The effectiveness of front, of front of peg warning labels is supported by international evidence. The adoption of these nutrition Nutrition warnings can help combat obesity, cardiovascular disease, type Yo, 2. No. Go back a little bit. Read that thing again. Is it this right when it says cardiovascular? This is heart health. Okay, okay, come on. The adoption of these nutrition warnings right? can help combat ob obesity. Obesity, come on. Obesity, man. cardiovascular disease. You see cardiovascular disease, that's heart health. Go ahead. Type 2 diabetes. You see? Go ahead. And some cancers. Mm. Go ahead. Several countries have introduced them, including Singapore, 1998, Thailand, 2007, Chile, approved in 2012, implemented in 2016, Ecuador, 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 Ecuador 2013, 2020, is it 2013? Yeah, go ahead. Indonesia, 2014, Mexico, 2016, and Colombia, 2022. You notice all these places that are being mentioned here is where Israelites are. Yes, sir. Do you notice this? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. So when it says in the world, who are they talking about? Israelites. When it says half of South Africans, who are they talking about? Black men and black women. Go ahead. Local evidence has supported international evidence and found that South African consumers, that's Israelites, they talk about black people. Go ahead. Have a positive attitude toward warning labels on ultra processed foods and drinks. When asked if they would be open to having warning labels on food, study participants said that warning labels were easy to understand and would assist them in quickly identifying unhealthy products. You really telling me that our people don't know that eating fast foods every day is not good for your health? They know it. Why do you still need a, a warning label on a, feed, on a Kentucky Fried Chicken? You tell me if Streetwise 3 came with a warning label on the side, the people will stop buying it. Not in Mzanzi. It's not going to happen, man. Is that it on that? Is there something else? Is it a video? Okay, let's see. Let's see it. That's, That's why me, ice cream. cream. No. I ate ice cream from, from Woolworths. The next day in the morning, my gums was bleeding, man. Yeah, let's read that. Reading from... But wait a minute. This thing is wrong, man. This statistic... Remember the statistic that we read about in the Western Cape government when they put it out? This thing don't make no sense. Because in the Western Cape government, that study, when was it done? Find the, find the year when it was done. Something is not adding up here. Yeah, what year was it? Because over there is a 68% of the women are obese and, or, or, and overweight. Here they're saying over 50% of SA women overweight by 2030. That don't make no sense. It doesn't make sense. Where we at? Just look at the top man, of that article. I'm sure there's a date here or the year. Because this was done when? On the third the of March. What year? So 2022, okay, 2022 in December. So transition this one so the people can see it. So this article was done on the 3rd of March, 2024.
Read the title. What does it say? World Obesity Day. What, guess what? There's a thing called World Obesity Day. Go ahead. Over 50% of SA women overweight by 2030. Now stop. Bring back the one of that was done in 2022. Something is not adding up here. You see what ENCA is doing? ENCA is battering our sisters. Because they are mainly talking about our sisters, man. So what is the still saying here? The, the research that was done by the Western Cape or the Eastern Cape government. Read obesity stats in South Africa. In South Africa, not in the Western Cape or Eastern Cape, in South Africa. Read are concerning as roughly 31% of men. 31% of men, go ahead. And 68% of women. And 68%, 68%, go ahead, of women in the country are obese. Stop. Now go back to the previous one. This was done in 2012, in 2022, right? Brothers, in December. The next one of ENCA was done when? Yes, yes, that's, that's it right there. 2022, 2022, December. The other one, when was it done? I, I can't believe they even have World Obesity Day. Are you serious, man? So that means what after that, what happens? Yeah, put that picture on. This is what's causing the obesity in the country, man. This. What is this, man? Come on, man. Yep, we are already there. There's not no not by 2030. We are already there already. We are, we are now we're gonna be on 80 percent, man. Because in the U.S., 80 percent of the women they are overweight. 80 percent. You understand? 80 percent of them. In South Africa, is 68 percent, and this study was done in 2022. So now here, ENCA, what are they saying? Because this was done in 2024. Over 50% of SA women overweight by 2030. This, this is not accurate. What is that? Let's see what they have to say. Now, obesity rates are on the rise around the world. Pause. And South I want you to Africa. pause there. Pause. pause. Come on, man. Come on, man. Now, now look at the woman. Come on, man. I mean, are you crazy? This woman was born or she falls under that 68% of women that are obese and overweight. Go back a little bit. Now, obesity rates are on the rise around the world and South Africa is not bucking that trend. Experts say more than half of all South African women will be obese by 2030. Obesity can lead to a non-communicable diseases, of course, such as type 2 diabetes and at least 13 types of cancer. But buying nutritious food is unfortunately not a possibility for many cash-strapped consumers. Pause. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. So they are blaming this on what? Poverty. Do you know, like, you know, I was having a conversation with this brother, that the Uber driver, and we're talking about this thing. To say, you know, the first thing that we talk about, we talk about the fact that they talk about GBV. They say no, 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 they say no, uh, they, no, underage girls fully pregnant. And they say the reason why underage girls are fully pregnant, I think there's a video in the video that we're watching. On ENCA, I think it's a doctor that was talking about this. Look it up. I think the doctor is Lerato something. He says that what um, underage, underage girls uh, pregnant and whatnot. I think it was ENCA. There was a clip of that. That a whole doctor, the, 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 the reason she gave why these underage girls are fully pregnant, who did she blame it on? The men. And she blamed it on the men. And she blamed it on what? On poverty. He says, no, it's because of poverty. Do you understand how poor we grew up? Man? There was no such thing. I mean, we grew up poor, man. And the level of poverty that the people are having now is not the same as how the, the, it was back then. Back then, it was worse. Now, people are in at 20 degrees and whatnot. They're, listen, man, they are not as poor as how we grew up. When you go to school, you don't even have food to eat. 
You go to school, you only eat breakfast of the food that was cooked last night. And the whole day, you want to survive on that. And you eat it before you leave the house. And you travel about 10 kilometers to go to school and you still have to come back. When you come back, you still have to go to go get water. Look after the cows and sheep and goat. What the hell are they talking about, man? They say they blame it on poverty. It's not poverty. It's just that the kids of today, they are out of control. They don't respect their parents. That's it. It's got nothing to do with poverty. Did we find it? Yeah, play. Well, as soon as pregnancy becoming a norm in South Africa, teenage pregnancies have been increasing at an alarming rate in the country. The National Health Department wants society to collaborate with government on its sexual and reproductive health awareness campaign. And this is meant to empower young people to make use of health services, especially family planning and contraceptive use, in order to prevent unplanned pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Brittany mm -hmm. Maber from the TS Foundation joins me live now to have this discussion. And thank you so much for your time, Brittany. A very warm good evening to you. Are you at all, you know, um, surely you are, but how concerning equally so is it to see the number at which uh, teenage pregnancy is seen? MEC Popiramatuba lamenting this even on Christmas Day that the youngest uh, mother was just 15 years of age. You know, it's extremely disappointing to continuously hear the increase of teen pregnancy. It should not only be alarming for us, but it should be alarming for everybody in South Africa. This is our future generation. These are the youth that are our future, and we are failing them by lack of education in our sexual health and reproductive systems. What should happen, Brittany, in this regard if underage girls are falling pregnant and becoming mothers i mean i mean surely we need to come to a point where as a country we call it as it is that is statutory rape here we go you're correct so teen pregnancy is a significant concern in south africa for several reasons it often leads to adverse health outcomes for both the mother and the child teen pregnancy can also have more impact on social and economic implications it limits opportunities for the youth um it also significantly in it also significantly contributes to our overburdened healthcare and social welfare systems that are already unable to help these young children pause. seeking assistance. Such no, no, pause. You see, this Iromaid is speaking facts. She's speaking facts. But I want the one of the black woman who was brought in on, is it ENCA or was it SABC? It may have been SABC. I think it was SABC. I want to see the, to the two versions. The Iromaid is saying, this, they, 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 they need to be educated about this stuff. She didn't blame it on poverty. She didn't blame it on the men. You understand? So, so she said, listen, they need to be edu educated about this stuff. She said, they, it also limits the opportunities of the youth because now the youth fall pregnant. What next? You understand? And they say now they are overbearing the what? The health, the healthcare system. Because it cannot be able to deal with so many teens that are pregnant. Find out how to change our lifestyles from the president of the Association for Dietetics, Maria van der Merwe. Maria, good morning to you. Thank you for joining us here on ENCA. I, I want to start with the indications. We've been talking about the fact that it will specifically be women that will be obese. Majority women that will be obese by 2030. Pause. Uh, uh, no, pause. Them. Look at them. Both of them are obese and overweight. They are talking about it. Man, you can't make this stuff up. Eh? Keep going. Somebody saying on Twitter already this morning to us that that statement is sexist. Maria, please help us understand the research that has gone into this statement. Thank you and good morning. Yeah, unfortunately, the uh, current situation in South Africa is that we already have two thirds, two out of the three women in our country being either overweight or obese, of which the majority are obese. So obesity is in terms of a classification, it's severe overweight. Um, and the prediction of half the women being obese by 2030 is based on current trends so unfortunately that is the reality that we are facing as a country in men the numbers are significantly lower it's about one in five currently um, so it is definitely more 
uh, of an impact, having more of an impact on our females. This is my point. That report is not accurate because we already have a 68 percent that was done in 2022. That 68 percent, and it's not something that is of the future. It's happening now. 68 percent of our women in South Africa, they are obese and overweight. See, currently as it stands. So when this report, when they say by 2030, this is madness, man. It's not accurate, man. You understand? And now they are blaming it on what? Poverty again. Because they are saying, because the, it's, it's, they, they cannot afford to buy healthy food. Let me tell you something, man. That's a lie. When they say they cannot afford to buy healthy food, that's a lie. There is no such thing. Because our people, they afford meat. You see the, 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 the type of groceries, groceries our people buy? They buy meat. Bright packs. They be praying. Every day they eat meat. But they say, no, 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 we're struggling. We can't buy healthy food. That's a lie, man. Give me Sarah 38. Sarah chapter 38, read verse 4. There's no such thing, man. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 38, verse 4. What's this? The Lord has created medicines out of the earth. The Lord created medicines out of the earth. Those medicines is what? Carrot, banana, orange, morogo, spinach. You understand that? These, and these things are cheap, man. These things are cheap. They are more, they are less expensive than meat every day. Cabbage. A head of cabbage is how much? Because it's what, 20 bucks? Listen, a head of cabbage is 20 bucks. Um, a bunch of carrots is what? 9 rand? 10 rand? You understand that? So morogo is what? Morogo is 9 rand in the Kazi. And in the supermarkets in pick and pay shop variety is 12 rand. So what you mean uh, the, 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 the unhealthy is very expensive to buy unhealthy food? That's a lie. Our people spend, the easy groceries, you see the type of things that our people buy at the shops, they buy Danone, they buy Mazimbas, they buy six liters of, two liters of Coca-Cola, it be sitting in the trolley, they buy six, I mean, six bottles of two liters of Fanta. You understand that? They buy biscuits. You understand that? But they, bought, they, they cannot buy veggies, morrow and all that. Come on, man. No, we're not gonna we're not gonna fall for that okey dog. We're not gonna fall for that lie. Sarah 38, read verse 4 again. No. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 38, verse 4. Read. The Lord has created medicines out of the earth. The most high God created medicines out of the earth. These medicines is the fruits and vegetables. Go ahead. And he that is wise. And he that is what? And he that is wise. And he that is wise. Go ahead. Will not abort them. Because our people hate to eat veggies. How many times do people have to be forced? Even children have to be taken to eat vegetables, man. You ever see that? They say, no, eat your vegetables. After this, we'll give you a piece of meat. They have to even bribe the child to eat veggies. Listen, man, you shove the stuff down his down throat. What are you talking about? We're eating fruits and veggies in the house. Why when do you have to, we have to beg you to eat fruits and veggies, man? Why? Well, we're not going to shove them down your throat, but you know what I'm talking about. We eat fruit and we eat raw in the house. When are you crying, you say, I want meat. No, we don't operate like that, man. And we didn't grow up like that. Our forefathers, our mothers, and our, our fathers and grandfathers, one, they, they, listen, man, there, were, there was raw, we ate that. You understand? We ate raw and cabbage and carrot. We are healthy, man, we're fine. No, there's no way we're not going to fall for that. Now, give me the book of 2nd Ezra. 2nd Ezra 9, verse 24. Watch this. Second book of Ezra, chapter 9, verse 23. Come on. Nevertheless, if thou wilt cease yet seven days more, but thou shalt not fast in them. Don't fast in them, come on. But go into a field of flowers. Of flowers, these are the herbs, these are the medicines in the earth. Come on. When no house is built, mm. and eat only the flowers of the field. Taste no flesh. Don't eat meat, meaning what? The Lord, you see, the Lord is even gave us, he says, okay. You can fast for two, three days, seven days if you like, 40 days if you like. But there are days where the Lord told Ezra, listen, don't fast for these seven days. Detox. 
only have fruit and vegetables, don't taste flesh, don't drink wine. So the Most High has even given us the time to say, listen, man, you can cleanse. You can cleanse. You understand? Go ahead. Taste no flesh, drink no wine, but eat flowers only. You see that the herbs of the field, come on. And pray unto the highest continuance. Rain. Then will I come and talk with thee. Watch this. So I went my way into the field, which is called Adan, mm. like as he commanded me. And there I sat among the flowers. These are edible flowers, come on. And did eat of the herbs of the field. What did he, what did he do? And did eat of the herbs of the field. Yes, he did eat of the herbs of the field. Go ahead. And the meat of the same satisfied me. Meaning the meat of the banana, the meat of the grape, the meat of the avo satisfied him. So you can eat fruits and veggies and be satisfied. The meat of the watermelon, that's what's inside, Muslim. That's the meat. It will satisfy you if you eat it. Exactly. Bananas, they are feeling, man. You can eat that, you'll be fine. So now, when they're blaming it on no, those that are cast trapped, what are you talking about? That means what? Well, if you are poor, because well, that's what they mean. So, what are they blaming it on? Poverty. No, poverty has nothing to do with it. It's just that as a people, now we're spending money on the ones rather than on the needs. Those medicines that are all on the earth, the fruits and veggies, that's your medication that you take every day. So you eat meat every day, you're killing yourself. You eat fruits and veggies every day and eat less meat. That's medication that you're taking because why? The most that God introduced meat into our diet. So he's not saying don't eat meat. But it's also not against the law to eat flowers only. You can eat veg, you can be a vegetarian if you want. You can be a vegan if you want. There's nothing wrong with that. Also eating some of having meat also, but having more veggies is also fine. Give me that in Genesis 9 verse 1 through 3. And get the sister to prep for the wine. Genesis 9 verse 1. The book of Genesis chapter 9 verse 1. Come on. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Right. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth. Come on. And upon every fowl of the earth. Right. And upon all that moveth upon the earth. And upon all the fishes of the sea. And into your hand are they delivered. Come on. Every mo moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. That's the introduction of the meat diet. He says, every what now? Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Every moving thing that what? Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Meat is introduced into our diet. Go ahead. Even as the green herb have I given you all things. He says, the same way I gave you a vegetarian diet, I'm now giving you a meat diet over and above that. Let's see when the Lord gave us that vegetarian diet, the vegan diet. Genesis 1 verse 29. The book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 29. Come on. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in, in the which is the fruit is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. There it is. To you it shall be for meat. So guess what? This was a vegan diet that was introduced to us in Genesis, the first chapter. Genesis 9, now this is after the flood. The Lord is introducing the meat diet, the meat into our diet. That means the Lord had to alter our stomachs to deal with the meat. Yes. The most I had to change our stomachs to deal with that meat, to be able to process the meat into our stomachs. You understand? Because there was going to be a need for it. So it's not poverty. We're not going to blame it on that, man. Fruits and veggies are cheap. They are cheaper, but we do know that they are cheaper than meat. They are cheaper than you buying Danones and whatnot. No, there's no way, man. Okay, where are we reading from? Reading from hotfm.co.za. Okay. Why every South African needs to eat more vegetables and fruit every day. You see, you know why? This is the reason why every South African, especially our people, man, 
They must eat more fruits and veggies every day. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 38, verse 4. The Lord hath created medicines out of the out of the earth, uh -huh. and he that is wise will not abort them. So these medicines that the Lord created out of the earth is the fruits and veggies that must be eaten every day. Okay, okay keep reading now. Yeah, read it. The, the country has high levels of diet and lifestyle related non communicable diseases, such as hypertension and type 2 diabetes. Go ahead. As well as both significant under and over nutrition challenges. All, all of these conditions make us more vulnerable to the coronavirus but also highlight how much power we have over our health, simply through our daily food choices. This is the message from an alliance, alliance of South African health organizations who are collaborating... But you are hiding, most now you keep moving these things too quickly, but my pictures are hiding the words there. Okay, okay come, come on. on, read that thing again. This is the message from the beginning. All of these words... All of these conditions make us more vulnerable to the coronavirus. So, remember during the COVID-19, the people, they, how much was the ginger? Very expensive. How much was the garlic? Very expensive. And now, what is happening? People don't give a damn about ginger today. They don't give a damn about garlic. They don't care about those things anymore. Go ahead. But also highlight how much power we have over our health. Simply through our daily food choices. <laughs> this is the message from the Alliance of South African Health Organizations who are collaborating with the Department of Health and the Department of Basic Education to promote the 2021 National Nutrition Week theme. Eat more vegetables and fruits every day. That's, That's what, what the Lord is saying. Is saying. The, the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 38, verse 4. The Lord has created medicines out of the earth, right. and he that is wise will not abort them. Sirach 37 verse 30. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 37 verse 30. Go ahead. For excess of meats bring a sickness. You see that excess of meats bring a sickness, right? And suffocating will turn into cholera. You know why? Because if you eat too much meat, you have less vegetables. You're going to have colon cancer. You're going to have you're gonna have stomach cancer. Because that's why it says what? Will what? It says, will bring sickness and suffocating will turn into cholera. That's your stomach cancers and your colon cancers. Okay, our own South African food-based diet, dietary guidelines is what? Our own South African food-based dietary guidelines include eat plenty of vegetables and fruit. That's what we just read. Go ahead. Despite this, research shows, shows that many South Africans eat for, eat for far less vegetables and fruit. Eat eat far less they eat far less what vegetables uh -huh. and fruits that we need to maintain our health you know what it means when he says that we need to maintain our health you talk about gut health yes, sir. that's why when you go to Kauai, you're buying um a wrap and that wrap has meat or chicken in it is 80 percent is what is veggies and then you just sprinkle some meat here and there because they know that the, the vegetable is going to help the meat to be digested and extracted quickly out of your system. That's why they do it that way. Go ahead. Rising obesity and persistent undernutrition are prevalent in many of our communities. That is the interruptions. It begins. Go ahead. We also know that when it comes to accessing foods, there is an abundance of nutritionally poor, highly processed food, yet as scarcity when it comes to a variety of seasonal vegetables and fruits. No. There is no scarcity of that. Every day you go to the castles in the street corners, the people are selling morongo, they are selling uh, cabbage, they are selling um, carrot. Listen, man, the green stuff, the green stuff is always plenty in the castles. It doesn't matter what type, of, what type of the year it is. So that's a lie. That's a total lie. In every season, whenever there's a season of avocados, there'll be avocados in every corner in the gases. If there's a season of oranges, every corner, everybody that's selling, they've got oranges. We all know this. So they are lying here, man. Read. All stakeholders 
need to come together to help communities and families access fresh vegetables and fruits. Those things are available already. What are you talking about, man? Because we are not talking about in the suburbs. No, in the ghettos. Fruits and veggies at every corner, even when you walk into pick and pay and spa, there's veggies. Our people, they just pass, they go straight to the meat. We see them, Bella. They pass, they, listen, man, you go to busy corner today, there's a pick and pay busy corner. That pick and pay, man, when you go to the veggie section, they are very fresh. They always have fresh vegetables and fruits. I've been there, I always go there, man. Guess what? You see our people, they just pass. You see where you gonna, you know where you're going to find the majority of our people? You're going to find them at the cake section, at the cookie section, at the biltong section, at the meat section. But at the veggies, very few of our people go there. But you'll find them at the soft drinks, at the juices. You understand that? You're going to find them at the tea stuff section. But when it comes to the veggies, hardly. I see this thing whenever I go there, man. Right? And to encourage South Africans to improve the quality of their nutrition by eating more fresh produce every day. Do you know how many how many people are selling bananas and fruits and oranges on the streets here? And they are cheap. Plenty. So you see what's going on, man? You see, the government is not helping, man. The media, is, because this is three government departments. The Department of Health, the Department of Basic Education. What's the other department? It was three departments they mentioned here. The Department of Basic Education, the Department of Health, and another one. You see, National Nutrition Health, what? You see? That means the nutrition of South Africa is also part of this. But guess what? The all of them, three of them combined, they don't come to the gases. You know why they mention stuff like this? So that they can get more money and in the name of we need to bring health to our community and they just eat the money. Because come to the gases, you'll see. Every corner, people are selling bananas, man. You'll always find a banana all the time. I've never found a time where there were no bananas on the streets, man. There's always bananas. There's always um, oranges. You see them. Come on, man. You telling me you cannot go out and find somebody selling an orange? You will find it. There's always fruits and veggies on the streets, man. That's one thing I can tell you. Don't, 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 don't even get me started on the cabbage. It's always there. Don't get me started on the morojo. It's always there. You understand? They be throwing water on it to make it look even more fresh. We've seen them, man. And guess what? The same thing they do on the street with by throwing it with water, they do it in pick and pay too. In the suburbs. To make it look fresh. You understand? So it's not poverty. Okay. Matthew 4 17. The book of Matthew chapter 4 verse 17. Come on. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent. Do what? Repent. Do what? Repent. Come on. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's the message. We must repent. And keep God's commandments for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And with that, we say shalom, most and God bless your praises to the Lord. Shalom, Israel. All praises.